Why, hello there, all you angry little pencil wielders. I must warn you of two things today. One, this left is a bit dry, which is unfortunate, because otherwise it is delicious. And two, we may at some point during this, uh, no, YouTube, now is not a good time to insert an ad. We may or may not at this point be, um, uh, be singing the Eminem rap. It's entirely possible. I might be sending the lyrics to Carl, too. <laughs> That's true. It might happen. It might happen. And, uh, well, you know, fair warning. As I'm sure many of you have seen the, uh, the news out on, or is it? Oh, uh, see, this is one of those, uh, those little things right here. You have a much weirder version of Forbes than I do. Hmm, that's weird. <laughs> but yes. Fair enough. The their latest Lord of the Rings uh, trailer thingity bob appeared not that long ago. We might have a look at that in a second. But I know a lot of people have been looking at this and go like, oh, that's not Sauron. Oh, that is Sauron. Oh. And nobody's quite sure. And I suspect that was probably Amazon's intent as well to get people to finally actually, you know, talk about their show. Because frankly, nobody's really been giving a shit beyond, well, shitting on it up until this point. So well played, Amazon, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to look at it, I suppose. A very optimist view. Because here's the thing, right? The uh, If you scroll down a little bit there, you'll see our, our M&M, our Slim Shady. Mm -hmm. Got him. Uh, looking, looking pretty. And it literally says, Sauron, credit Amazon. Now, this is Forbes. Like, if anyone has the inside track, it's probably them. And I've seen tons of other publications, too, saying, like, this is Sauron. Maybe they're just guessing, entirely possible. But he's also presented in the entire trailer as the big bat. Like, he is commanding armies of goblins, it appears, casting fire magic and shit. Which the question then is, okay, how many other, uh, like, evil characters in Lord of the Rings are there that could do that? I mean... Uh -huh. well, it's the second age, so there shouldn't be too many around, right? Yeah, that's the thing. There really shouldn't be all that many followers of uh, the Dark One back then, because that, uh, that was pretty rare. And I swear to Jesus, if this is Melkor, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's funnier, actually, than it being Sauron. <laughs> I see... With all of the ridiculous timeline fuckery, <laughs> I, I'm half tempted to say that this is Sauron the White as a young boy or something equally ridiculous. Sauron the White. Oh, that'd be, that would also be weird, but that would still that would be slightly better than him being Sauron. Kinda, but now you're fucking up the, the timeline again, because yep. now we're, we're into the Second Age. We're into um, uh, a very peculiar situation here. Theoretically, we don't know anything about Sauron's um, background because he kind of just fucking showed up at some point. Like, hey, we're wizards, yo. <laughs> I, uh... I suppose. I suppose I was, uh, Amazon could just make something up, but that would be weird. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon did, considering there's they're like how much stuff they've changed. They're already making stuff up, as is. Like, especially with the presentation of how they uh, had Galadriel being, like, instead of being, you know, beautiful and strong in her own right, uh, they had her, you know, she's strong, independent, believe, empowering, as she's, like, you know, hanging on to the cliff's edge. Like, in some she sort of the, generic poster, literally. She is the only one who realizes that Sauron isn't defeated. The only goddamn one. Yep, and Elrond's just like, mm, I'm, I'm just the wrong whiny face, dude. Like, he just Elrond. got Elrond... Some... Fucking Elendil, Gilgalad, everyone's just staring on blank faced. Gilgalad's like, I don't know what I'm doing here right now. <laughs> now, so let's let's uh, like get to the bottom of this whole Eminem Sauron thing first and foremost, right? Before we even move on to anything else. So mm -hmm. here's another thing too. There is a other character in the show as well who is just currently billed in casting as the Stranger who came to Earth in a comet, and that is supposed to be Anatar, of course, the guy who actually, um, like, the, the, the creator, the, uh, the, um, the author, shall we say, of the rings. 
who made Leia Fesh real magical. Like, that's also Sauron. And I'll send you the link uh, for that here. So scroll down about halfway in that one, and you'll see uh, Daniel Wayman as The Stranger. Because this is a very different looking guy. Like This is like uh, brown hair, very tussly looking, very almost non-threatening, which is also a massive fuck off, by the way, because Sauron was described as beautiful. Like that's that's kind of part of the point. The reason why he managed to influence so many people was because he was incredibly charming. You know, he was a bon vivant. He was an incredibly charismatic individual. And here he's just like some fucking scraggly ass beggar dude. He's going to be a very charismatic beggar. He'd be like, please, sir, may I have some more? <laughs> oh but my goodness. Here's the big problem. With so much timeline fuckery, we have no guarantee that there aren't going to be several Saurons. That's the issue. Because the arrival of the Stranger might be completely different. I, we're talking several thousand years here off from whoever the hell Eminem here is. And also bear in mind, Sauron can look like whatever the fuck he wants. And you're shapeshifter. He, yes. Like, he doesn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. So it would be very weird... I don't know. It, it's yes. it, it. I mean, the whole situation is kind of hunky dory. Like I imagine they're fucking with the story. I mean, I a think lot. we're all we're all very much convinced of that. But to what degree, we got to find out. Yeah, that's the issue. So we don't actually have the faintest clue. I've also seen the chat go like that. Sauron's actually Halbrand, which would be very weird, seeing as Halbrand is a. Um, invention of um, Amazon. Like, they just made him up so that Galadriel could have a handsome boy toy to play up against. Yep. Literally. Which is pretty lame, but okay. <laughs> That'd be weird. Uh, particularly as Halbrand appears to be one of the people who helps Galadriel discover Sauron. Like, that would be a serious fucking cell phone in that case, but yeah, uh, maybe. Don't worry about it. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, Sauron could be any one of these goddamn characters. Like, the only thing we really know is that he was in the, the guise of uh, Anatar uh, when he managed to convince people to, like, make the rings as weapons, etc., to protect themselves and then give them over to the various factions. So, that's probably Sauron, but Eminem could probably be Sauron too. Uh, hell, Haldbron could probably be Sauron. We are dealing with so much timeline fuckery that there is almost no way to say for sure who anyone goddamn is at this point. Yeah, and I think they're doing that intentionally to be like, oh, look, the mystery, you know, who is Sauron? But that, I think, is just kind of lame. Hey, I don't necessarily mind the idea of it, because you can make a little bit of a, of a mystery show out of that, like trying to figure out who the bad guy is. The problem is shows very rarely do that well, and they just kind of spring it on you in the last episode and go like, aha, we gave you uh, no hints, it was the butler all along or something. Plot twist, uh, got him. You like being shocked, right? Surprise! <laughs> something stupid like that. The worst part is too, like, ah, oh, God. We know exactly what kind of role Galadriel is going to have in this. She is going to be the only person who knows anything about anything. Everyone else is just going to be goddamn window dressing. And you can tell that by the fact that we've barely even seen any of the other characters. Like fucking Elendil and Gilgalad, two of the most central characters in the war against Sauron. I, I don't actually think we've seen Elendil at all. Like, I think we've seen Gilgalad. I, I mean, think. this is the first time I've seen Gilgalad. I don't remember seeing them, but I don't remember the trailers that well. They're, they're kind of forgettable, honestly. They're very generic. They don't really say anything. It's just like, ooh, look at these action set pieces, like 90 times. Or look at this cool set piece, you know, this, like, dwarven city underground. Like, that's it. That's all they've really done with this stuff. Oh, uh, you want to watch I'll the video? The, um, I'll send you the trailer here. Uh, the fucking thumbnail of the... Oh, God. That... Okay, so... The chick of the thumbnail just... Cause... You people are probably going to see it, but it's the uh, the Queen Regent, the uh, the black chick. And I actually like the actress because she was in Spartacus, which is an awesome show. But I hate the fact that she's the ruler of Numenor. Like the Numenorians are literally described as like very classic 
Well, Norse people, they're, they're tall, well-built, fair hair, blue eyes. That's the Numenorians. There, the ruler is a black woman with black hair and brown eyes. Like, she's... What was it? There was another part of the Numenorians too. I can't remember the names, but they were... Um, they were raven black hair and grey eyes and still pale skin. Like, she doesn't fit a single one, except maybe the Dunedin, which I, t I don't think that's the inspiration. No. And if the Dunedin managed to rise to the position of rulers of Numenor, I'd be very impressed. Yeah. Honestly, the whole, like, racial thing swap thing is just more so a, a diversity quota thing. They have no care, because they've already expressed that something about destroying the past was something they said in one of the tra trailers, as if jabbing at the fandom, like, shut the fuck up, let it go, you know? Yeah. And they did this with Star Wars, too, like, kill the past if you have to kind of bullshit. There's a serious hatred for these pre-established, like, IPs, and these, these authors very much want to turn and twist it into their work, rather than respecting the work that came before them. Egos and all that. It's it's dumb. I counted the white people in the Numenorean court. I think there were about three of them. Numenoreans are white. I thought they were all. <laughs> I thought this was sub saharan Africa. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> but sorry. Right. Let's um the the trailer. It starts with Galadriel doing the most unelven thing I could possibly yep. imagine. Let's start it. And you know what I'll like do? She is. She's stacking a mountain of helmets of the dead. That's very weird. That's very weird. Like, what the fuck? Th this is the problem with the writing. That's just symbolism without any meaning to it. It's like all these helmets for all these dead people, but in actuality, that's stupid because that like, implies that the characters are wearing around taking the helmets off dead people and just stack it. <laughs> okay. Like, I, again, I get the symbolism of that scene. I understand. And you say, oh, all these people were lost in the war, etc. I get it. But it's not something the elves would do. Like, it's... It's disgusting. Like, it's disturbing. Like, oh yeah, no, we just looted their corpses and piled their helmets up in a stack. Why? Mm -hmm. It's just weird. This is also, uh, when it comes to wording, 47 seconds. This is something you see a lot of historical films, quote-unquote, bunny ears, with the, like, based on a true story. This mo this show is going to be based on the works yes. of Tolkien. It's not. It is not. Lord of the Rings is not based. It's not the lore itself. It's not accurate. It's based upon it. That mm -hmm. kind of verbiage is used very carefully because they're they have no intention of being like actually. Holy shit! I just looked at the like to dislike ratio. <laughs> oh. That's really Here you go, people. bad. <laughs> this is the reason why YouTube removed the dislike button, just in case you were fucking wondering. Let's just, uh, I'm doing my part. Are you doing yours? But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that's, uh, okay, sorry. I got, I got completely thrown off track here, because even I was expecting it to be slightly higher than that, just because it's, you know, you know, casuals. But Jesus Christ, even, okay. Yeah, and people are not particularly fond of this thing people really. are a little upset it's skewed in in favor of negativity heavily <clears throat> yep um we see like uh some stupid shit i Sauron somewhere we see a, a shot of sauron's hand um if you go to a minute 49 minute 49 yes Oh, we get like an evil hand. The hand's claw is very reminiscent of the uh, the claw-like hand he had in uh, the Lord of the Rings. You know, with like the little metal bits, how it's kind of shingly. Yes. But what I'm more interested in, honestly, is the fucking orcs. These fucking Ku Klux Klan-looking motherfuckers, dressed in white. What even... What even is this? This doesn't look like anything like Lord of the Rings. It's like they, they, they're, I don't know, that's strange. Especially the one on the right there. Like, it's got like a KKK hat almost. Like, like I'm what? presuming <laughs> they're goblins. And like, orcs and go like, not goblins. Yep, really. they're, I mean, he, Tolkien used the word, you know, basically for the same thing. 
Yeah, but here's the and on the the thumbnail of the movie too. There's um or maybe the uh, the video. There's there's another goblin dressed in white. Now I want to point out something here. The goblins in Tolkien's universe are a bit mystical. Like a lot of the things in the Tolkien universe are quite mystical and tied to their alignment in a way. Like we're talking D and D shit here, right? Almost yep. light and darks, literally straight out of straight out of that yes. playbook. In fact, it fucking basically invented the whole light and dark thing that D and D operated off of. Goblins find the color white to be disgusting. Yeah, it, like it is repulsive to them. It is anathema to them. And yet, here you've got an entire horde of fucking goblins wearing white. Mm-hmm. That, uh... It reeks of a little bit of suspicion, you know? <laughs> Again, obviously, the writers haven't bothered researching anything, but it's... God, the Ku Klux Klan vibes I get here. The, the, the bad guy is this... Blonde, blue-eyed, little white twink, and you're surrounded by Ku Klux Klan members. Like, mm, the messaging is getting a bit thick. Just a pinch. Jesus Christ, though. I'm not. All, I'm not. Oh God, Galadriel in her fucking armor as usual. Mm hmm. I'm Galadriel sorry, but like, is out of her armor. The forced diversity thing is kind of cringe because. Tolkien wrote Lord of the Rings to give mythos and, like, a fantasy based on, like, an Anglosphere-style thing. Like, that's the whole purpose of Lord of the Rings. That and him playing with language. So it, it feels kind of just like a spit in the face of that Anglo sort of mythos by just, like, trying to undermine it. Being like, we was... It was like, uh... My my Viking ancestor is that that one guy said. <laughs> like that is yep. that is what this basically means. It's it's actually appropriating another person's culture, unironically, which is ironic, but uh, funny in its own way. My Viking ancestors. My Viking ancestors. My Lord of the Rings ancestors. <laughs> my Numenorians. We was Numenorians and sheet. <laughs> That's stupid. And at the end, of course, we've got uh, a Balrog because, you know, we got to have that. It's it's just Iconic. one of those things. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, the movie had this. We must have this, too, just like we had The Hobbit. Yep. Iconic things it being iconic in the show so that you can be like, wow, I remember I remember the, the Balrog. Do you remember, chat? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's literally just playing on, you know, popular things and tropes that was established by more talented people. Now, presumably, it will have to do with um, Durin's fall, I guess. Which they're going to bake into this as happening simultaneously with everything else. Honestly... It's one of the few stories that I'm kind of looking forward to. If they do the Balrog right as more of this kind of creeping, deadly, unstoppable force, it could be an interesting story with the dwarves. But I bet you the same thing is going to happen here. Like the, the black dwarf priestess is going to be like, please, no, you'll awaken the Balrog. And never went, oh, whore, silence. And they'll keep rigging, digging. And then the Balrog will appear and she'll just stand there looking smug. Told ya. I was right as everyone's being genocided. Like, how right am I? Tell me how right I am. Tell me. <laughs> and it'll turn out that uh, the Balrog would have broken loose and, uh, like, scorched the land if she didn't uh, probably do some kind of sacrifice things. Like, she had to sacrifice herself to bind the Balrog. Goddamn evil white men, I tell you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem with this show. It just feels corporate. The, like, the cinematics look corporate. Interesting, like, CG stuff. I'm sure there's you know, a CG mill with all these CG artists working to the bone, you know, dying and in droves to make some of these shots. Because the CG looks interesting, but eh, like it's just going to be corporate whitewashed soulless garbage. Like that's kind of what I'm expecting here personally. I hope it's going to be so much worse. Like I actually hope this will be one of those truly awful TV shows. <laughs> I'm hoping this will be the the E.T. video game of television. <laughs> you know, I think uh, a good analogy would be basically the failure of the uh, 1984 Dune movie. It was such a colossal failure that it reshaped a lot of the industry and the filming industry 
So that's kind of like, that was kind of interesting, like how that did. This could be one of those things where it's so disastrously bad. It's like the 1984 Dune movie where it reshapes the industry. Maybe it's like a wake up call and they, they revert back, you know. This is me being overly optimistic, you know, there, but I really doubt that. But I do imagine that uh, that there's going to be a lot of people losing their jobs over this as soon as this shit show stops generating money. Because I imagine day one, you know, first couple episodes, it's going to, you know, have high views. But I, I have a suspicion that viewer retention for this show is going to drop like a rock. Very possible. Now, Chad is also pointing out Durings Bane was awoken in the Third Age. Yeah, that's true. And well, that's one of the issues as well. We don't know how much this show is going to incompose, because theoretically, Amazon doesn't have the rights for any of this shit. None of this shit. Like, they have the rights for the appendices. At the very best, you could argue that they have the right to name drop, drop these things. That's about it. Like they don't, again, theoretically have the rights for any of this, which is why I'm kind of wondering if that white dude isn't Saura, Sauraman or something. But the weird thing is, too, you can very clearly see him do use dark magic screwery in the trailer where he's blowing out fire and shit. And Sauron, Sauraman, uh, no, Sauron, Sauraman didn't start out evil. I mean, yeah, he was always a bit of a jealous bitch, but he didn't start out as a bad guy. Mm -hmm. So they're going to show his, like, turn in this show, you think? Just fall nah. from grace? Or are they just going to be like, he's evil already? I would hate it if that was Sauron. No, Sauron, but <laughs> I can totally see it. You think it might be Sar Saruman instead of Sauron? Maybe. I don't know. He also, doesn't look like Saruman. But... One of my pet peeves, too, is uh, that they everyone refers to the Balrog as the Balrog. The Balrog. Yes, it kind of annoys me. Is Balrog? <laughs> there wasn't a Balrog. Like the Balrog, Balrog isn't a name. Balrog is a species. The Balrogs. <laughs> but hey, writers, you know these writers probably maybe watched the Lord of the Rings movies at best and were like, "Yeah, that's gonna be basically what we're doing," and not even bother to look into the actual books or appendices themselves. Like, how much of this did they actually? Use? And not to mention, they actually fired the one. I hate to use that word, scholar, but they fired the one Tolkien, Lord of the Rings scholar dude, who basically said, like, no, this is, like, an insult to Tolkien's work. Yep. So one well, of those dudes actually had is. the balls to stand up. So kudos to that guy for actually telling him, like, yeah, no, this is an insult, because it is. <laughs> it is an insult. I just wonder how far they're going to take it. Like, how far are they going to go? That's what I'm wondering. Like, how how deep is the shit creek gonna get? The deep seated. You think the deep seated hatred that they probably have for Tolkien himself is gonna come out and surface? I mean, you you got the sound off, so you can't hear. But for the chat, during when um when Sauron, Sauron, whoever the fuck he is, Slim Shady, yeah, that's a better name. <laughs> when Slim Shady bro blows out those little um glowy bits from his hand, like all spooky like Ember sparks, we yeah. There's a um he says, many lies have been told about Middle Earth. Which is a very interesting sentence, because you could read a lot into that. Like, okay. Um, were the orcs oppressed all along? Like, were the orcs the good guys? Orcs were what about just misunderstood. Sauron? Was he just misunderstood? Or are they going to go the full full mile here and go like, oh yeah, Tolkien's work? Nah, many lies have been told. We've uh, we've got the true story. And honestly, I think that's what they're going to do. Because I think that is what they've been aiming to do this entire time. They don't want to make Lord of the Rings. They want to make Amazon's Lord of the Rings. They want to destroy as much of the property as humanly possible and stamp the rest with their own brand. Yep, to corporatize the shit out of it. That's the, that's the disgusting thing, because Lord of the Rings is a deeply Anglo thing. It's deeply British, like the whole thing is. So the fact that they're just like, no, 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 it's everybody's. This is everybody's thing. It's like they're just ripping it up, you know? It's kind of just disgusting to see. 
I also have a sneaking suspicion we have uh, we get a view of the Witch King in this uh, trailer too. The Witch King of Angmar. The the little boy who makes like a a sword of fire and weirdness in his hand. I, it it looks kind of like a refugee camp, so I'm thinking maybe this is after the fall of Numenor, and uh, there this is the, uh, the when they got settled in Angmar, and then they'll just speed up the fall of Angmar to a thousand times per second. It's like, oh, Angmar fell instantly. That was weird. No, uh, no. <laughs> They're gonna just go through Arnor, like Arnor. Oh, sadness. <laughs> The Witch King's just gonna derp. I don't like it. I don't like it. I am. I'm kind of feeling that because I uh, remember nobody knew who the Witch King was, so they could just be like, oh, "He was an oppressor, a shave boy. This was his way to freedom." I can't remember off the top of my head, but wasn't the Witch King of Angmar? He, they never really truly like def. Did they defeat him, or like he just like fled or something? I don't remember. That's um... that's where my memory gets hazy. Because I know no, he destroys th the kingdom of Arnor. I think they killed him. I'm pretty sure he died, died. Because the Nazgul's aren't immortal. Like, they're not spirits. Mm -hmm. So he's dead, dead. Because they crushed him. Because so. Karn Dune is this, like, a, nothing but an abandoned fortress. By the time of the War of the Ring, if I remember right. Oh, uh, god damn it. They're gonna make the uh, the Dark Lord and his servants the good guys. I actually, I kind of hope they do. I genuinely kind of hope that would they be do. like that would be so opposed to what Tolkien did because Tolkien's like Tolkien's like nah, these guys are good people, these guys are bad people. Right. It's a simple concept. What here's here's my dream scenario right here. I'll, I'll tell you my dream scenario oh God. to really just ruin the shit out of all of this. They they fly with this whole like white men bad thing. Mm. You know? yep. All of the all of the bad guys are blindingly white, obviously. <laughs> of course. But somehow they manage to write this in such a way that people kind of look at them like Homelander and go, Hero. <laughs> 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 and that becomes a meme. <laughs> and Amazon just freaks the fuck out. I know you're supposed to hate. I'm like, no, no, no. Goblins were oppressed all along. Even Maybe then. Sauron's kind of based. Dude, Tolkien, like, Tolkien would be literally a reactor. He'd be spinning so much in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> Sauron misunderstood, okay? <laughs> oh god help me <laughs> that's terrible that would be great that is what I would like to see happen that would be just perfect actually genuinely perfect the witch king Callum says the witch king fled as far as I know then he was killed in lord of the rings in the war oh, yeah, that was, that's what I was referring to I'm pretty sure he's dead hmm I was mostly talking about uh, after the uh, the fall of Karn Dern or whatever the heck, because that's when they defeated the Witch King's army in the north. That was like okay, in the I, I don't know about age, that, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't, don't remember. know about that, but I'm I'm pretty sure he was stabbed. To, well, he must have survived then because he was killed uh, during the Battle of Pelennor Field. Yeah, because I was I wasn't sure if he like re raised or something as like a spirit or something. I was that's my question. But nah, uh, um, he would have fled because again, the Nazgûls aren't spirits. Um, in the same way that, like, Sauron and Morgoth are. Mm -hmm. They're greater entities yes. that are much more difficult to defeat. Because I, I didn't think the Witch King was that powerful, and he isn't. No. Oh, God. I, I, oh, God. I, they need to screw this one up badly. And I think <laughs> they will. I have, I have a great deal of faith in that they will. The thing is, because of the public's reception right now, it's so negative, They, it would have to be, like, Literally, we'd, we'd all need to be knocked off our gosh darn socks. Like, in order... Knocked out of our socks. Knocked out of our socks. Yeah, I, I, listen, the verbiage here is difficult for me. Knocked out of our socks, more or less, because that is the only way they're going to even have a chance at repairing the damage. At, at best, in my opinion, is it's going to oh. be received as a wet fart. Oh my god. What? Like, go to two minutes. Two zero, minutes. Zero, precisely. Two minutes precisely. Yes. Oh, when that's... the dwarves are doing their little hymn thing. <laughs> the lady just... in the back is horrendous. The lady in the back, that's the black dwarf. The only black dwarf, to be fair. But what I'm more interested in is, 
off to her, um, like off, not to her, but off to the left, the second dude in the rank, look at that schnauzer. Oh, that's quite the cook, the curve. Look nose. at that schnauzer. That's like a scythe, my dude. <laughs> that's, like a... <laughs> that's a me. Wow, that's that's a that's oh my god. There's that's a majestic. hook beaked on the right, too. Front, front, middle, right, right man. Look at the hook on that one. That one's sharper. <laughs> that that's, one's got a beak, too. That that could do some piercing damage. Like, that could pierce through chain mail, like criminy. Yeah, but. <laughs> Compared to my boy on the left there, like, I think we found Sauron in the Dwarven realm, because to dwarves, he must be incredibly attractive. Like, check out that curved beak. I'm like, mm, having a hard time resisting that. Hey, that one's just majestic. That, that one's just good. I kind of want to zoom in on it. Like, real, uh, when we get to this scene in the TV show, we'll have to just... That schnauzer will probably be on the thumbnail. Pixelated <laughs> to high hell, but oh well. Like, and then we'll have to tell people, like, that thing you saw, that's a nose. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Enormous thing. Oh, that would be cruel and horrible. It's the, but that's, a, that's a nose. That's a nose. That had to be altered. That's not a natural thing. And just slap putty on his face and continued slapping it on until I was like, nah, there was a point we should have stopped. We should have stopped. Yeah, well, past that now. Let's it's, keep going. This is comical. I almost find it funny. Let's let's get this in the trailer. Let's, get that. let's keep going. Oh my gosh, that's one mighty nose. It is quite majestic. At least I will say this though. At least this trailer looks a lot better than the previous ones. The previous ones are have kind of been awful. This one at least looks. All right. It looks like, like it's got a, some good know, cinematography. Yeah, no, like some of the shot working from the like the shots themselves and like the scenes, like the choreography doesn't look that bad. Like it's not like you know Obi Wan. Like especially the CG. The yeah. CG, like to give this show you know praise, where the only thing I've seen that makes me want to praise it is the CG artists did a really good job of giving it that high fantastical feel of some of the cities and shots like that. Like, they look really good, but that's about it. Which kind of annoys me, too, because they've done a good job of some making so many of the cities look pretty fantastical, mm. but they've completely failed to make any of the elves look fucking elven. That pisses me off. You're absolutely None of the right. elves have that ethereal feel to them. That is, that's, that's actually something. So if you look at, uh, uh, what's it, Peter Jackson's uh, Lord of the Rings, he went out of his way to try to make the elves look as beautiful as possible. Like, only picking actors and actresses that looked, you know, extremely fair-skinned and very, you know, beautiful or handsome. Like, a, a beautiful race. Because how Tolkien described it is the elves are a beautiful people, you know? And yeah, like, yeah. they sort of look kind of just meh in the show. Yeah, I'll use that picture. Like, Gilgalad. Gilgalad just like... Uh, I yeah. sent you that, because that's, that's Gilgalad. And he doesn't... He looks like an alright Gilgalad. It's, it's not awful, like, he kind of fits, but the thing is, he doesn't look elven at all. He looks like a dude with weird plastic ears. He looks far too stodgy and human-y. Like, compare this to, um, oh, I was about to say Tolkien's depiction of Elrond in the movies. Tolkien wasn't there for that. <laughs> to, uh, to Jackson's, per, to Jackson's per depiction of Elrond. Like, the lighting does all the fucking work. Oh, the lighting, like, yep. That, they make it. They make them almost bloom, like glow, even in the light. Yes, I, he looks ephemeral. Yeah, they really didn't capture it on the left hand side. Like Elrond looks spectacular on the right there. Yeah, the use the of lighting. With, yeah, the Mirkwood Mirkwood scenes are great for that. By the way, with. Uh, Gladriel. Terrible names. Yes. Yes. She she actually glows heavenly in the moonlight. Uh, let me see if I can find the um All right, like here. Even even during the Battle of Helm's Deep, right? Mm -hmm. here. This like it's gloomy, it's dark, it's wet wet, it's foggy. Yet still the elves look ethereal. The lighting, the shine of their armor, their stance, their position, their uniformity. Yep. All of it combines to make them look ethereal. 
like almost like this heavenly force that even in even during the the bleakness of that scene at Helm's Deep, you know, surrounded by the Urukai trapped in there, the elves were the stoic force of good standing against the yes. darkness. And they are distinctively different from the Uruhirim around them too. Like they draw their bows in perfect unison. Like they're drilled and fire and unison. Like they come across as so different. That's also something I've noticed too. Like the Lord of the Rings films, like when it comes to their costumes and sets, like these, the armor on these guys looks way better than the armor we've seen in the show. Like this yes. looks great. This has got this very ethereal feel to it. These almost like warriors from heaven vibe. Uh, God, there's barely any good pictures of Galadriel in her dumbass armor. <laughs> It's probably a good idea. Gladriel never really struck me as a character from the uh, the films or the book as like a as a sort of warrior princess kind of lady that they're trying to go for here because it she gives off the warrior princess archetype vibe. Well, she wasn't like she she wasn't fighting on the front line yeah. in the War of Wrath or anything. Feels like that was not her job. Mark. But again, it's it's 2022. You must have your strong female protagonist. Otherwise, what do you have? Mm. Ah, Squealy sent me one. I'll send it to you. Maybe this is kind of what you're looking for. There you go. You wait, you were looking without the armor. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. That, okay, I was looking for the armor. Okay, so oh, that, that one. picture there from Vanity Fair one. Good Look at that one in comparison. Her armor is dull. There's nothing ephemeral about. There's nothing elven about it. Like it's dull chainmail. In fact, her chainmail skirt looks dirty. Like they've rubbed it down with like coolant or something. So to the point where like little flecks of metal is sticking to it. And her too. Like her face. This is one another thing. Lighting and makeup. She just looks like a fucking human. She looks entirely human. She's got a little bit of flush in her face. There's nothing. The the other elves. Look at the other one again. Yep. They're I got the light also. skinned. Like they what? They almost glow. Yeah, no, they look. They look stark. They look like they're completely different things. Not not even part of the same universe at all, actually, because they did not capture that ethereal vibe with them. No, not at all. Like they just look like people, which is <laughs> that's the thing. The elves aren't human. Mm hmm. And that's a, that's something that they make very distinct in the uh, the Lord of the Rings. They are their own race. They're different. They aren't human. They're not just people. And her armies, her armor being dirtied, and even the chainmail. Like, let's talk about the chainmail again. Look at the chainmail cut of the links. Is that something you'd expect an elf, you know, smith to do? Like the links are all at different lengths and imperfect. That feels very no. human, mortal. That's not I, made by I no know. elf. Again, the the chainmail on her hands too, like her chainmail cloth. All of it, it's, it looks imperfect. It doesn't look well made. Yeah, it looks like uh, like it was made by a human smith trying to like, imitate an elf. Exactly, that's a great way of putting it. Like it looks like a human smith who tried to make elven arm. Like there's some artistic details, there's some flowing contours, and like the functionally it's quite good. Like you've got the 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 uh, elbow guards and stuff on mm -hmm. it, you know, giving it's a good arms. movement. Yeah, like for a piece of plate armor, this is a fine piece of plate. But compare it again to the golden swirling leafed armor of the elves of Mirkwood. It, there's just no comparison. Yeah, the Mirkwood Warriors look just spectacular. And again, I want to point out too, okay, if Galadriel is supposed to be a warrior queen, right, fair enough, she should be wearing armor that reflects that. If Gal Galadriel is one of the first elves, in fact, isn't she like a second generation or something? Off the top of my head, I do not remember. But she is one, of, I know she's one of the more powerful beings. Let me check that out, actually. Uh, yes, birth 1,300. Like, she's one of the oldest elves. Yeah, she was... Yeah, she is, she is before the First Age, yes. Like, she is ancient. Yeah. <laughs> she looks... You know what? Hmm. 
I think they're doing it intentionally. She's the young, sort of spry character for new generations to latch onto. This was committee board designed. That's what this was. Mm -hmm. That's what she feels like. She's young, you know, she's she's inexperienced. Even though by this point she'd actually still be old. <laughs> and I, okay, if we're gonna talk about um the actual lore here too, right? What she should actually be, because they're gonna present her as the only one who knows that the darkness is coming. Whereas mm. in reality, not only didn't she know, she didn't even think that Morgoth could be defeated. Like, that's the camp she was in. She just wanted to give the fuck up. Yep. Also, there's, uh... Chat says that they're the elves from Lorien. They might be. But I'm pretty sure... Actually, I read... If I remember the Two Towers book, don't the elves not actually show up at Helm's Deep in the books? Because I don't, I don't remember the elves being at Helm's Deep. I think that was a Peter Jackson thing. That they were added. They they might be the elves of Lorien. I don't remember off the top of my head for the movie. Lord of the Rings committee board power. Board of power. <laughs> yes, that's kind of what the show feels like, though, when you look at it. Like, all the characters, their designs, and their aesthetics. Oh, right. Yep, no, Chan is right, because that's Haldir. I was, I was blanking on his fucking name. That's Haldir in the front. He's from Lorien. Yep, he was he was in Mirkwood with Galadriel. Yes, that's where I was confusing them, because I'm pretty sure that's where they found him. Yep, they met with him after they exit the um Oh god, the, I'm terrible with names. The the city. Minas no not Minas anything. Moria. Minnesota. Yeah. They they come out of Moria, they head into the forest of Mirkwood, they meet up with him and uh, Gladriel. And the forest elves. It's been a while. It's time to watch that movie again. I like that. It was a good change because it felt like the uh, the men didn't stand alone. Like it added a bit more of a universal feel to things. Plus, I always kind of hated the idea that the elves were just fucking running away like little bitch whores. But such is the life of elves, being a bitch whore that is. Awful, 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 awful. I can't I can't wait to see Elendil as a proud black man though. That'll be fantastic. I'll quite enjoy that. Or have him be short. That'd be funny too. Or maybe. Alright. What we could have here, homosexual romance between Gilgalad and Elendil. What? Yeah. That's cringe. No. Remember, Kyle, uh, they have a deep friendship, and you know how uh, leftists view friendship. Two men can't be friends. They can only be faggots. We can only have sex with each other. We can't. It, any other sort of social interaction is inappropriate. <laughs> oh, and just, um, we, we gotta do one more thing on this entire Lord of the Rings shit pile. So... This is from Burning Edge Comics. Again, great little site. I have a, I really do recommend. I love some of these. They're fucking amazing. So here we have the, the Comic Con board with, um, I think like Stephen Colbert was there who claims to be like a huge fan of Lord of the Rings and shit. He isn't, obviously. <laughs> yeah, let's pop this open. Um, so go down to like the second tweet there from Total Film. Uh, the second what? Hold on, pop-ups and shit. Second picture, you say? Yeah, like the second tweet. So there's Total like two film. pictures. Change of setting in Hall H. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, the one below that. Oh, below it? Got it. Yes. Read that one out to me and, and tell me if you spot something a bit weird. The cast have arrived and Colbert's already annoyed at Charles Edwards for playing Celembrimbor, uh, creator of The One Ring. Why? Why do you make me do this, March? <laughs> because you, you giggle. deserve it. That's why. You giggle, but I think you owe me an apology. <laughs> I think you should read these out. No, I don't think so. Rude. 
Did you uh, did you spot the slight inconsistency there? Only only a small one. Only a tiny one. Just a pinch. You know, things are going relatively well, all things considered, I think. I'd say. I mean, they got it right that he <laughs> did make... Uh, that he did make Rings of Power. That's that's true. That's that's correct, if nothing else. Listen, they're trying, okay? You need to be gentle. They're, they're having a hard time. They're getting, you know, their shit kicked in PR-wise. Ah, uh, yes. Celebrimbo, the creator of the One Ring of Power. Yes, that's uh, that's the story of the Lord of the Rings right there. And anyone who disagrees will uh, just have to go inside the hole, I guess. Crawl into it and uh, be buried. Yeah, that's the only. Um, it's, the, it's the it's the only option. <laughs> God, it's one of those things that like you don't get wrong. It's like the entire plot. The entire fucking plot is literally revolving around the idea that Sauron made the one ring to control all the other rings, which he tricked them into making. And even this, they can't get right. It's just, it's magical. You know, I'm, I'm really, I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if half the writing team has never even watched or read Lord of the Rings. Bearing in mind that uh, the cinematic movie is not the same as the uh, the books, but still. Now, if you go down to, uh, you'll see another hot take there, where he uh, the the guy who's playing um, Celebro says Edward says elves are inherently unhappy as written by Tolkien, and his character could be easily manipulated by an exterior source. Elves are inherently unhappy, as written by Tolkien. He's never... Uh, tell me you haven't read the Lord of the Rings books without, without telling me you haven't read the books. <laughs> that's, the, that's that meme right here. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> and the elves are inherently unhappy. Please, tell me why. Tell me sweet little wise. Like... I get it. If you haven't read the books and it's just a job to you, like, whatever, you know, be professional about it. But don't fucking lie. <laughs> you literally could just say. You could. Uh, that's the interior. And <laughs> I'll give him this. I'll give him this. Like, at in the Third Age, you could certainly describe them as um, melancholic if not straight up unhappy like they're kind of well they're, they're giving up on the mid on middle earth they're they're thinking about fleeing over the sea to where they'll totally be safe and you know sauron won't just invade that fucking place either but details details which was one of uh, tolkien's dumber points of writing by the way it's like we'll crash to sea and we'll be safe in this land of plenty yeah but sauron's one of the people from that land of plenty like he'll figure it out eventually not only that, but uh, Sauron wants to reshape the world. Yes. Not to mention, too, like, you not didn't kill Melkor either. Like, he's not dead. You literally can't kill his fucking ass. Like, yep. giving Sauron an entire continent sounds like a bad idea. Abandoning Middle-earth to its fate is, uh, is a strategic disaster waiting to happen. They're, they're just fortunate yes. that Frodo and his band and the, the, and the Fellowship uh, managed to... Uh... Actually, no, the Fellowship of the Ring technically failed, actually, if you think about it. <laughs> but it is what we would like to uh, refer to as a poor strategic decision but oh well mm -hmm. but even then like you can say that they're melancholic but that's in the third age that's after them living for what like five plus thousand years or so like you might be getting sick as shit at that time is all i'm saying yeah i think sauron once he had middle earth he would uh probably continue to uh what do you what do you call it? To redecorate the various other I, places. I don't imagine he'd <laughs> stop. <laughs> I think, uh, and once he's enslaved all the free folk of uh, Middle Earth, he would probably continue his uh, his uh, chain of conquests. But again, like you, you, you can again definitely say that by the Third Age, the elves had gotten fed up with shit, and mm -hmm. they just wanted to go something else. But even then. That doesn't mean they're inherently unhappy. And certainly not, again, bearing in mind, and here's the big fuck you too, right? 
they don't have the rights to the third age. They, they don't have the rights to the second age or the fifth age. They have the right to the appendices. Yep. The question is just how far will they push this? Will they push this all the way into the third age? Like how many thousands of years of story will this stupid ass show actually cover? And yeah, again, we're not even talking the third age. We're, we're talking Celebrimor. Like this is second age. And we we're not even close. We're not even halfway through it. We're talking about the creation of the fucking rings here. Like, I'm her inherently unhappy. Selim Bribo didn't create the rings because he was fucking moping. <laughs> mm -hmm. That wasn't the point. Not to mention, too, easily influenced by an outside force. That's the thing. Anatar is not obviously evil. That's the entire point of Sauron, like, pre presenting himself as an incredibly attractive person, you know? Handsome, well-spoken, educated. He's tricking Celebrimbo. He's fooling him. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I mean, that's a, it's part of the whole... That's part of how Sauron tricked all of them to wear the rings to begin with, so he could control them. Yeah, because he didn't tell them, like, oh, by the way, I'm making another one that can control the others. No, that... <laughs> he did that in secret. Such a stupid joke. He did that in secret. That was a that was the big surprise. That was the, yes, that was literally the big <laughs> surprise. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> surprise. Oh my goodness! Also, the place they were fleeing to—that was called Valinor, wasn't it? Yes, Valinor. Mm. Okay, I was ninety percent certain. I remember some of the songs. And no chat. Uh, I pronounce Celebrimbo with a C because anyone who goes like, this letter is obviously a different letter, I tell them to fuck themselves. It's it's the English language, Celebrimbo. I can't remember how it's pronounced. I, I know it, but I don't care. It's the same reason why I refuse to acknowledge that Cyphus Kane is supposed to be Kyphus Kane, because it's a dumber name, okay? Fuck you. Your name is Kyphus Kane? That's... Like, in this context, the C is pronounced a K. No, Englishman. No. Yep. Well, listen, just because you don't like the English language, but C sometimes produces a K sound. Cunt? Like, the word come here. Come. Come here. I, I, guess I said come here. C-O-M-E. 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 Can you? Suppose, can but I'm you, still not accepting this line of argumentation. Can you come here? That's two C words, but they produce the K sound. Just like cats or... But versus chickens is, you know, C-H. Ch. I refuse to accept this in names. I refuse. Like in we words, sure, but not in names. <laughs> Whenever it sees a C, it's like, it's a suh. <laughs> it's a... Not in names. I'm not, I do not allow it. I, oh, this, this was Comic Con, though. There's another gathering of the super fans where it's like, ah, oh, we, we totally know what we're talking about. Super fans assemble. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Arch does not care. I like that one. <laughs> that was good, SG. Head pats all around. Again, you don't get to have the C in names. You just don't. Like it. Again, I, I lean on Kyphus Kane. It is an objectively dumber name than Cyphus. Like, fuck everyone Kyphus, who accepts it. Kyphus does not sound very fun. It sounds like it sounds like some sort of venereal disease. I have Kyphus. Yes. Like, help yes. me. Yes, <laughs> <I'm> Kyphus. <laughs> it's fucking lethal. You're it's, not surviving. I have I have the Kyphus badly. <laughs> There's no living through Kyphus. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like a venereal disease. Cyphus is better. I'll give you that. There, I can. Uh, we'll wrap up the Lord of the Rings segments with another beautiful look at Slim Shady. <laughs> Will the real so soy Ron please stand up? <laughs> I, I bet you, you know what the worst thing would be? If, if they really wanted to make this a proper bad TV show, oh God. what they would do, okay, listen to me, here's the thing, the oh. first season, 
you'll have like four different plot lines all acting out at once, but separated by thousands of years. Basically, Witcher the first season, and you give no indication that that's what's happening. So you just see you see four different Saurons doing four different things at four different points in time. And in the last episode, all of them side by side just take off their hoods and go like, I was the bad guy all along. And then it's revealed that yeah, none of this has anything to do with each other. None. Absolutely nothing. It was just all a bullshit ruse. Sarwan's master plan was a series of weird and awkward writing tropes, all fumbling together to make a single, incoherent plotline. I knew it all along. <laughs> I do hope he wipes out the Harfoots, though. That'd be funny. Accidents happen, okay? A little bit of genocide never hurt nobody. I hope it won't be an accident either. I hope it'll be very much so intentionally. <laughs> You're like, I'm specifically genociding you because I don't like you. <laughs> That's what I would do to the Harfoots. Why are you killing us? You're the wrong color. Oh Literally. no, Barch cancelled. He's like, Barch is now Bartron. Got him. It's true, though. They are literally <laughs> the wrong color. Oh, Jesus. That is technically true, though. Oh, I can, I'm going to really hate the Harfoots. All right. Before we move on to uh, to Homeworld 3, mm. which will be very much so a looking at the trailer going, there's no actual gameplay in this. <laughs> yeah. I'll go through a couple of these super chats because these Streamlab ones will just fucking disappear if I don't get to them in time. Um, Slatimus, also known as Artemis Fowl, says, Sauron looks like the representation of a progressive, strong female character. Maybe Sauron is non-binary in the Rings of Power. I mean, looking at him... He looks feminine enough to be uh, violated. I'm pretty sure of that. Not an image I want in my head, but okay. <laughs> Maybe that's why all of the orcs wear white, so as to hide the cum stains. I'm now sad. Uh, Sauron says, Dear Morgoth, I wrote, but you still ain't calling. Trying to summon you on the planet here back in autumn. There's probably something wrong with Anin Ain du Lelier. Yeah, screw you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a song text of something. Uh, Glowy says, Elves are back in new lore. They get twisted and changed to become orcs. The circle to completion. Blacks are orcs or blacks are corrupted and become... Can't say that word on YouTube. Spicy territory. Everyone knows the word. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too. Like, I bet you they're going to... That's probably going to be part of the uh, whole make the orcs the good guys thing, where they'll be like, they used to be herbs. They're just corrupted. They are innocent victims in all of this. There was I would not be surprised. There were actually the brown elves. My God. As well, this is one of the traps of progressivism. You can't have anyone be black on the bad guy side, but at the same time, you must have representation. So what do you do? The bad guys must be inclusive. <laughs> well, inclusivity is our strength, after all. <laughs> uh, Glory says, I want black female dwarf to be Oprah ripoff. You get a wagon of gold. You get a wagon of gold. Everyone gets a wagon of gold. Then evil, bad, white, somewhat Jewish dwarf says, no, it's our gold. No giveaway. Subtext, capitalism, bad, commie, good. Well, yes, the whole dig too deep, too greedily will probably be presented in that precise fashion. Right? Oh, dig too deep. Too greedily, capitalism has done this to us. Yep, because the dwarves are just going to be humans. See, this is the problem with the elf thing, right? They made the elves humans because they interpret it like they're humans, the dwarves are humans, but small... And so they have the same, like, it's all tethered back to humanity. It's all this big, deep thing, you know, it's a, it's a what, do, what do you call it? Like a, a big thought piece on capitalism and how it's bad. <sighs> mental, of course it would be. We must do mental gymnastics in order to make this work, Barge. Something nice and stupid like that. But I can absolutely see it, where they'll just make everything humans that have human problems, and that's all. Like you gotta, you gotta approach this with a little bit more of a well idea of what you're goddamn doing. Now it's fine to have factions based around certain like ideas, for example. Mm -hmm. Like you've got a faction like the elves, right? Yep. Who are 
the 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 key cornerstone of the elves is ephemeral, long lived, you know, special. What we now refer to as the elven stereotype, straight up, because that's their defining characteristic. You know, ethereal and faggoty. Same with the orcs, like <laughs> brutish and angry. Like these are stereotypes, and that's kind of because they're good. Stereotypes but, exist for a reason, after all. The problem is when you turn them into just other humans and you don't do anything more with it. Like, you can take a human problem, like, for example, capitalism, and go, right, okay, uh, how would this affect a race like the dwarves? Because the dwarves live for, what, like, three, four hundred years or something? More? Much longer than a human, for sure. So how would their society be different because of that, you know? How would that yeah, play like, into it? Capitalism would function completely differently. Uh, lifespan, 250 to 350 years. Okay, so they're about a little longer than Numenorean then. Mm. But yeah, right, okay. 250, 350 years, all right? Capitalism would function entirely different in a society where the average age is 350 years old. You you would have the opposite, like, like, families, too, would build up so much more wealth and power and personal influence that capitalism system we had probably wouldn't even function unless you had an, a hyper, like, use and dump society, kind of like ours, where you just use mounds of shit and dump it by the sideway, so you constantly need to replenish it, but... There's again the problem with dwarven handicraft. Everything is made to last. Everything is hewn from rocks. Like dwarven holds last for hundreds of years after the dwarves have disappeared and so on. Capitalism would function completely differently in this context, which is why if you just do it as human capitalism, you completely miss the fucking point. Mm -hmm. Of what makes these cultures and these races different. The whole reason why they operate the way they do while they make their items to last so long for longevity is because they live that long versus a human wouldn't yeah. worry about that they're going to be around for 350 years so the fridge better last for at least half of that yeah, it better work for a while at least <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're such fine craftsmen that that all connects back together same for the well, elves also the too. idea that if you spend 100 years working on something you're probably going to be pretty good at it contra 20 well. to 30 that is also true. They spend an entire century dedicated to the crafts. That's why those elven smiths are so good, the ones that uh, forge the elven blades and elven weaponry. And that's also why elven weaponry is revered even by the dwarves in some in some regards. Because it's yes. finely crafted. Because the elves are the, um, the... The elves just don't die. They just don't. They just don't. They just sort of keep making stuff, unless they die in battle... They're, they're going to be yes. around. <laughs> Unless actually killed, they don't die. I'm pretty sure they're immune to disease and shit, too. They are a long-lived people. Well, immortal, quite literally. In a more... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and even then, bearing in mind, too. Like, uh, see, this is one of the cool things about... Oh, I, I got to do a little bit of side tangent here. Because mm -hmm. there was a, a part of the, uh, the the fall of Isildur, which they were quite, how do we make Isildur a tragic character? Like, I don't know, just write him exactly like Tolkien did, I guess. But like, no, no, no. We need to mess with that. Or they didn't read any of it, one or two. But one of the reasons why Isildur needed to be tempted by the ring, both in the movies and in the book, was because somebody had to. Because if you think about it, the, the rings of power... The One Ring is so powerful that people can't even consider going near it or they'll totally be tempted, right? Mm -hmm. Yet nobody actually gets tempted by the damn fucking thing. <laughs> like, Frodo is so uber-duber special because he's the only one who can carry it without falling to the Dark Lord, but no one else actually falls to it, and that's the problem. If nobody falls to it, you're just left there saying, like, okay, you're telling me a lot of shit, but nothing seems to actually be happening here. But... When you add in Isildur, a character of myth and legend, this grand king of a bygone age, who did fall to it, you lend credence to that. You And then you do a little bit of Boromir, too, who was you know, tempted partially, but then, you know, snapped out of it, etc. Yep. It just goes to show the, the weight of the ring. And the whole Boromir thing was to show that, yes, the, the fellowship was bound to fail had Frodo not went on, on a separate path. Because the fellowship the ring would have torn them apart from the inside out. Yes, and 
that's why you do shit like that, because you need to actually demonstrate the things you are claiming. And they build it up. They build it up with a seal door. They they establish the ring's power contained. You know, even this person who of great heroism who fought a war against Sauron to destroy him, you know, to, to put an end to the whole thing. And he failed in the end, you know? It, and it just goes to... It goes to hammer home the ring's threat level. And then Boromir again to demonstrate, you know, how it corrupts and begins to slowly warp and twist people through time. <laughs> Which is probably also something the writers are going to screw up because they're not going to represent that properly. The Ring of Power is just going to be a thing because they're going to look, nobody else got corrupted, but she's not actually that powerful. Whereas, again, in reality, the corrupting power of the Ring is to the point that when Gandalf suspects what it is, he doesn't even touch the letter in which it is contained. He picks it up with fucking fire tongues. Mm -hmm. He's afraid of it. Yes, because if he did touch it, bye bye Gandalf. Like that's how powerful it actually is. Yep, and that's that. They also establish, you know, the hobbits with his father or uh, Bilbo. They establish the rings corrupting influence. Like yes, the hobbits are a peaceful folk and they're resistant to its powers, but even they can be corrupted. It's only a matter of time. Ah, there'll be many fuck-ups in this TV show, and uh, that's for the better. That is that is for the better of all things. The harder it fails, the better we all are, because then we won't have to deal with it. Uh... Uh, Killjoy says, have you heard of War Surge? It's a war game where you create these stat blocks for units, meaning you can use miniatures, any miniatures you want. Hmm, I haven't. That sounds... Ah, uh, see, the problem is that sounds like something that would just be inherently unappealing to me. Because I need my settings to have a story, and if they don't have a story, I'm just sitting there like, why does the stupid people beat each other? I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with you there. It's like if we play a first-person shooter and the story's not interesting. So I, when you play Red Faction, you know, you're, the whole setting is what makes you care about what you're doing. It's like, I, you could make a shooter and have no story and you just shoot things, and that'd be something. But in Red Faction, you're part of a rebellion, a minor uprising, you know, taking down Ultor to try to break free of their basically like quasi-slavery thing that they had going there. there. There was a reason for what you were doing, and it helped motivate you to do those things, rather than, you know, oh, it's just a, a blank, nameless thing that has nothing, no meaning. That's not interesting. Le Resistance. Le Resistance. Oh, the French are now subscribing in mass, I see. I do dislike Le Resistance. They're now unsubscribing in mass. <laughs> uh, Lord Camina 2, I'm glad Eminem's cousin Skittles got a job. <laughs> good Skittles. Kid. Oh my fucking god, that was good. I kind of want to rewatch Eight Miles now. It was not a bad movie, and it was made when Eminem was God, just actually God. Everybody has their height and their fall from grace. That's that's how yes. it's supposed to be. Right now, he's a fat, mediocre SJW rapper, but hey, you know he was he was pretty cool once. Back in the olden days, as it were, you know, a decade ago. Hmm, I can't find it on the page one of the torrent site. Uh, then I'll just give up. <laughs> I knew it. I didn't it. want to watch it that much. See, my theory on piracy and dealing with piracy is correct. If it requires a little bit of effort and it's too much effort to look for, people won't do it. Case in point, Blondie. All right, fine. He convinced me. He's like, I'm doing it now out of spite. But had I not told you that... <laughs> ah, it's because it's not called Eight Miles. It's Eight Mile. That's a much worse name. Uh, I don't like it. My theory still stands correct. Just don't tell them and they won't know any better. <laughs> Probably this is my torrent slide of choice. Actually, it's not very good at, like, sorting things. Well, oh. this will be a mild hassle, but I'll get over it. Oh, that's right. There's cuckolding in Eight Mile. Oh, I like it better now. <sighs> What is why? No, we've already had this conversation several times. Keep going with this. <laughs> Adoman says, "Poor Tomoe being harassed with history questions." 
honestly, half of them weren't even history questions. So uh, for the deep lore here, for those rest of you who are un uninitiated in this, uh, Tomoe is, is our newest VTuber in the uh, Arch and Cube VTubing company, which will be launched sometime between now and the return of Jesus Christ. Mm. You spent a good Where... time grooming her the other day, that's true. Yes, we are going to create a stable of men pretending to be women and women pretending to be men. And we think we've got a good niche there sorted out for ourselves. I think it'll be very popular. It's a trap industry, okay? You got your regular yes. traps, you got your reverse traps, all sorts of traps. <laughs> all sorts of traps. It's fantastic. It'll be called Traps Illustrated. <laughs> traps Illustrated. I was thinking more of like the bear trap or something. The bear trap and, and like a little bear trap. <laughs> yes, like I'm also bear trap two words, so it would be a half naked trap. Hmm, but what kind of trap? These are the big thinkies. Uh, well, we'll have to discuss that in the board meeting, but... Um, <laughs> Tomoe claims to be a military person, and so we're like, okay, well, you must know something then. Like, no. God help us. So we, we devolved to the point where I asked her what the capital of the Empire of Rome was called, and uh, there was still no answer forthcoming. Mm -hmm. We asked her who won the Civil War, the United States Civil War. She didn't know. That was a problem, too. Yeah. Who attacked Pearl Harbor? Had no idea. Didn't even know that Pearl Harbor was attacked. God help us. She uh, she was pretty based on who was the good guys in World War II, though. I'll give her that. She's like, the Nazis? <laughs> we might <laughs> be lying. Italy on the side of the good guys? <laughs> Is that the Romans, though? <laughs> God help me. So there, there's the deep lore on that. Basically a mega normie. So normie that uh, I think normies even uh, commit seppuku. Uh, Jesus here look busy, says, Hey, Larch and Gibbs, if the Emperor does have a Chaos God in his form, how would he battle the other gods in the great game? Also, Rico should have chosen Dizzy Suda. Carmen was a gold-digging thought. Listen, Carmen was hot, okay? Carmen was really hot. Um, what the fuck was the name of her actor? She has let herself go, to put it rather mildly. She's also old now, like, she's getting up there. <laughs> Carbon Ibanez. She was described in the books, too, as just this ridiculous hottie. So you gotta understand. He was a bit thirsty, and she was the hottest chick around. So, eh, there you go. Mm hmm And Dizzy, like, Dizzy... Dizzy doesn't even exist in the books, does she? Or, no, 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 no. That's not right. Dizzy's a man in the fucking books. That's right. Yeah, they, they did a bit of a twist there. Like... It's important to remember that if you read the Starship Troopers book and you watch the movie, they it's best it's it was easier for me to look at it this way. They're not the same. They share same names of stuff, but that's it. They're super different. <laughs> but yes, they were he was it was a he in the book, and I don't think Rico fucked him, so there you go. Well you never know, you know, he's part of the Space Force. She gets lonesome up there in the void. You know, we gotta find company in mind somehow. Too. <laughs> in Starship Troopers, the book, the mobile infantry were incredibly thirsty, to the point they had to segregate off the female parts of the crew just to make sure there wasn't any um, misdoings around. Mm -hmm. The women were also pilots. No, they were not part of the mobile infantry. Like as a well, direct force of them, right? They could, like, well, the book kind of doesn't confirm it because there, there was the rumors that there was a female in another training unit over there on your stuff. That's but most rumors. of the women joined the pilots because they had better, uh, like, hand-eye coordination or something. Something like that. But they, they, they're they the ones who did the flying of the dropships. Yes. They also did it because of uh, psychological reasons, because hearing them over the voice was like hearing, like, an angel. Like Which is also up. one of these fucking retarded Heinleinian from the 60s things, where it's like, like, that's why we needed women in the Space Force, to speak over the loudspeakers. Today we're just like, uh-huh, so you mean Siri. So that's basically it. what you're telling me, Heinlein, is you're a bit of a thirsty boy. He's like, very. <laughs> that is true. Like, if you read Starship Troopers, you get there was a bit of a drought going on in Heinlein's uh, life at the time there. Heinlein's like, okay, guys, like, I just, I need to insert a little bit of a fetish. Just a teeny, itty, bitty, witty pinch one. <laughs> Female voices there are, are the some, intercom. Uh, <laughs> there are some interesting descriptions in there. <laughs> Poor Heinlein.
Uh, but as to how the Emperor would, would fight the Chaos Gods, well, he'd do the same as, um... Oh god, what was I saying? There's the fourth Chaos God of Anti-Chaos, um... I'm drawing a blank right now. Come on, Lore Master, let's go! Come on, Barchi! <laughs> let's go. It's like a baseball theme. Nope. Malice? Look at him. He's thinking. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because there was... Uh... Right, hold on. I can, I can find this out. Yes, it was Malice. Yes. Yes, it was Malice. I was correct. Oh, Malal, if you want to be pedantic about it. But yes, Malice. Because the sons of Malice. Look at them type. I like how one person will get the correct answer. And so everyone else will then follow up and copycat that. Because they're like, no, it was me. <laughs> yes, because the of sons of actually. Malice, the uh, Space Marine chapter thing, yes. Uh, but... It would be the same thing, where he would just be able to create his own demons. Because fighting Chaos Gods is fucking pointless. Because the Chaos Gods themselves do it all the goddamn time. Nothing ever changes. Because it's not like they're fighting over resources or anything. There's literally infinite of everything in the warp. It's just a, a power game of total influence. But there are stories of uh, the God Emperor's angels descending on the battlefield and doing weird stuff, so maybe he already has demons. He just doesn't have as many of them, nor are they as effective. Hell, you could even argue that the Legion of the Damned are his demons, which would be a cool interpretation. See, I like the mystery aspect of that, because that's cool, because it's like, hmm, yes. is it real or is it not? It's just been like legends of it happening. I'm sure GW will fix that soon enough, though, and just be like, yes, the Legion, uh, Legions of the Damned, uh, they're the spirit of uh, women who fall in the service of the God Emperor. Like, and ah. uh, the demons of the Emperor are actually the demonesses of the Empress Erda. Or it's like, ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that's even better. Thank you. The Legion of the Damned are actually Erda's servants, not the God Emperor's. Perfect. Erda is the actually secretly more beloved and worshipped than the Emperor. Nyeth! You know, because Nyeth isn't as nearly cool as Erda, the hero. God, Erda. That's a name you never give to a woman. Oh, God. Erda. It sounds old, doesn't it? Like, I guess that's kind of the point. Like, come here, Erda. And she's like, I'm coming. <laughs> I suppose it would be fun naming a child Erda. It'd be like naming them one of those classical old names, like, um... Oh, God. I'm blanking on old names now. It's too. like if you had a son and you named him, oh, you're Cicero, and he'd be like, Dad. No, Cicero fuck? sounds cool, though. Cicero is one of those names that is... Abbott. There you go. Abbott. bullied for, though. <laughs> like, Abbott? No, Abbott. Abbott. He'd definitely be bullied for Abbott. Like, your name is Abbott. And like, Dad, do you hate me? It's like, yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Or Obadiah. Ooh. Oh, yes. Constance. Oh, Constance is a mean name to give to your daughter. Prudence. Oh, Gladys. Oh, Matilda. Uh. Patricia. Yeah, these are names from a bygone era. Cicero would get bullied for sissy? Yes. Sissy Cicero. Oh, he'd be bullied to death. School shooting. <laughs> Waiting to happen. <laughs> Some names just don't translate well. Cicero may be a badass person in history, but sadly, children are mo evil little bastards. There will life. Be no mercy. <laughs> that would be a good name for a child, too. You say life? Blythe. Blythe? How about Belial? <laughs> Reginald. Eh. No, no, no. A perfectly white kid, like blindingly white, from two Norwegian parents, Tyrone. Yes. In Contentia Bodies. Are you making a fucking reference there to a certain British comedy skit? <laughs> uh, Trevin Blue says, Thanks a lot for what you're both doing. You're very welcome, sir. Uh, Mark Shamed, congratulations to Commissar Gamso beating GW's DMCA claim on his Patreon. P.S. Put him on the cast. That's right. I do need to try and figure out how to get in contact with him again. He, I'll try and remember. That's good for him, though. 
Uh, my zemd Sauron, Sauron, Sauronon, Sauronons. Sauronons, that'd be good. The goblins can't let him around their children. There are actually results for putting Sauronons into Google. His horse is the first one that pops up immediately. Eric Kelly says, Sauron looks like that try-hard edgy kid at school. My name is not Dylan, it's Sauron. Ah, Chuniview. Chuniview is a term we need to introduce more to the West, in my opinion. Mark James says, Orc lives matter. Hashtag end elfness. The elves were the bad guys all along. I don't think they can do a full homelander, but I wish they would. Ikthulu says, please compare images of Slim Sauron and the Passion of Christ Satan. Bet this is the source. Passion of Christ Satan. I have never watched that movie because when, I, when it came out, it was described as, oh, it's so bloody and gory. It's like torture porn and shit. I'm like, that sounds uncomfortable. Don't want it. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Ah, Satan's just a bald dude. I mean, it's fair. Weird. Why would he be a bold dude? That's weird. I don't like that. Oh, you're right, Internet. He kind of does look a little bit like Obama. Weird. Are you saying that they're connected? Possibly. <laughs> Glow in the Dark says, maybe orcs are misunderstood. Orc lives matter. I have a sneaking suspicion that will be part of the plot, yes. That would be very stupid. <laughs> Uh, Dragon Master Outcast says, Hello, Arch. I've been looking into some of the lore about Age of Sigma, and I don't really see where the hate for it's coming from. Um, how about uh, Sigmar, when the world ended, went into space, where he created beads, and then a bunch of space gods came around and went, Wow, dude, those are some amazing beads. Could we have them? And he goes, like, No. What if we give you like, infinite power over the universe? Like, mm, okay. And gives them the beads. <laughs> I like the hesitation there. <laughs> It wasn't entirely convinced. <laughs> then Sigma gives them the beads, and now he's God, and he makes the world, and he's God's like, I could just make paradise and resurrect the corpses of my fallen warriors. That's fucking boring. Let's make the orcs and goblins and the iron dead and shit too. And there's even a segment when he's like arm wrestling Gork and Mork, and it's just, it's the dumbest shit. A the age of it's Sigmar, like if you say, if you shit. genuinely say that it, there's no problem with it, like. Jesus Christ, you're hurting my fucking soul. Number one, the first problem with Age of Sigmar is they... What did they have to do to make it? They had to destroy the old world. So fuck all of us, I guess. And so what's the second thing they did with due to Age of Sigmar? Not only the cringy-ass origin stuff, but they lost their aesthetic. Everybody just looks like space marines in Age of Sigmar. Like, it looks like 40k light, but fantasy. It honestly looks like they're trying to copy World of Warcraft versus Warhammer Fantasy was like this sort of nitty gritty sort of like grim you know fantasy setting that was very unique we didn't really have anything like that we kind of grounded a little bit too so it had this like sort of realism vibe and then where did that go like that's out the window all we have is uh age of fucking sigmar now that's kind of cringe Where's age that? of sigmarines Sigma. I do dislike it a great deal. It's also a universe in which absolutely nothing matters because it's basically just a war in the warp between gods with infinite armies. It's like, okay. Nothing matters. Right. Fuck, I hate it. Ah! <laughs> and like, I've destroyed planets and universes and galaxies and fighting wars over millions of mass. Like, I don't care. You've made every so everything so big. I just don't care anymore. That's the problem. It's like, you know, when you inflate numbers in a game, right? You hit somebody in a game and it does like four to five damage. It may not sound like a lot, but the damage impact is higher. Number crunch, right? Let's say you hit somebody and does 30 million damage, but that's a basic attack. The numbers become bloat and it doesn't matter anymore because it's just inflation. Primaries Nothing matters. I also really hate the dwarves. The fucking fire dwarves. They're so dumb. Like, wait, dwarves, but on fire. Ugh. Oh. Spare me. Oh, my God. Age of Sigmar okay. is This awful. is the thing. I get it, right? I like dwarves, too. And I want to, like, do dwarves. And it's like, ah, cool. But here's the thing. If you just do 
what has already been done seven times. You're just being fucking boring. And if Warhammer can get away with it because it's Warhammer and it's the only fucking thing in tabletop gaming. But whenever you look at any of the other tabletop settings too, it's just the same fucking tropes again and again. Elves it's being elves. Different. Dwarves being dwarves again. Yes. It's like I don't want to see. I don't want to see orcs. I don't want to see dwarves. I don't want to see elves. If I see orcs, orcs, ah, dwarves orcs. or elves or orcs Short. again, the, I'm gonna no, be mad. I, <laughs> I would accept that. Orcs, I'll I'll take it. They're orcs, but small. There you, know you go. What? That's a sufficient enough transformation. You combine orc culture with dwarfs. It's like a goblin hybrid thing. Like it's weird. <laughs> no, no. Like they would just be really touchy about their height, so they would see everything as an insult. And like you, you think I'm short? Don't I didn't say that. You think I'm tiny? I asked if you wanted fries with your food, dude. You think I'm a midget? Me? This is war. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Super That'd be kind of funny. Yeah, I like this. Orfs can be a orfs can be a faction. You asked if I wanted more fries. You think I'm a growing boy? Are you implying I'm small that I'm not reaching my maximum height? <laughs> Sadness. Yep. I think orfs will be a good thing. We've had enough orcs, elves, and dwarves, but orfs—that's where it's at. Sentinel Rex says, "You know when an elf walks into a room, that is the difference between how Jackson portrayed them and Amazon's attempt." Elves exist on a higher plane. But yes, that's the thing. Elves aren't fucking human. Mm -hmm. They aren't. And you, you shouldn't portray them as if they were human. Like, if you look at Elf and go, oh, dude, that's wrong. That's, you have made a fuck up. Uh, John McKellar, just saw my new job and I haven't been paid yet, so this is all you get. But if either of you get pregnant, I can scan you plus letters for money's worth. I can well, scan you. you. Oh, you're one of the pregnant people scanners. <laughs> pregnant people scanners, yes. You're like, What's in there? Business these days. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just a bowling ball. I don't even know how it got in there. <laughs> That's strange. What kind of weird sex play are you into? Blushes. <laughs> are you pregnant, or is that just a lot of Benoit balls? Shrugs. <laughs> oh my god. No, they're beanie babies. <laughs> oh, terrible. Uh, Glow in the Dark says, Is it me or does none of the Amazon armor have any shine to it like a dull aluminium? Only the jewelry has any shine to it. That's true, true. Like It feels kind of like they're trying to do gritty realistic because that's that's just the third end now. That's one of the... Oh, God. I, oh, I, I shan't, but I could wander into a whole fucking rant about the superhero thing. Like... The reason why Marvel had massive success in superheroes and DC flopped so fucking hard is because Marvel remembered what superheroes were fucking supposed to be. And so they're bright, they're over the top, they're retarded, they're full of humor and stupid shit. And then less and less humor and stupid shit and so the movies got worse and worse. But that was the point of it initially. Now, look at DC. Look at Superman. Like, Superman made me really dislike Henry Cavill before I had any idea what he could do, because I was like, you're just a boring Superman. And it's like, I can act, trust me. And they did Witcher, and like, ah, oh, they did you wrong, my boy. Some, they that, did you wrong. That can, I mean, that sucks for actors, like, and actresses, when you get, they get put into a movie, and the first big name thing they do, like, either typecast them or makes them come off as, like, boring or bad. Like, they just get shafted. That happened to a lot of the people that were in the uh, the Star Wars prequels, where they they, they got fucked career-wise. And I forget where Boromir got his problem. I forget the actor's name, where he got typecast as the guy who dies. <laughs> Poor bastard. Yes. Like, Superman is not a dark and gritty villain. Like, okay, you want to do Superman dark and gritty once. All right. Cool, sure, why not? Yeah, well, one off, fair, fair enough. When you've done him, but we haven't had a bright Superman in a decade plus. Like, just give us fucking Superman. I guarantee you, people would love to just have a Superman. Don't do anything in, don't do like injustice or have him have any difficult moral quandaries. To, Is it really all right to do this? No, just have Clark Kent going to fucking uh, New York or whatever the hell the place is. Metropolis, there you go. 
showing up at the Daily Planet and being like, hi, I'm just a mild-mannered reporter from Kentucky, or wherever the fuck he was from. I'd like to see a superhero do superhero things without it being Marvel and be like a good guy and save the day for once. It does seem like we're yeah, but... in a trend right now where it's like, but the superheroes are evil and they kill millions of people. And it's like, I mean, it's a, it's a trend. It's popular. It's cool to do once in a while, but very, very few times is it done well. And I think the only time it's done well is the more I read into the Homelander stuff, because Barch likes to talk about it a lot. Like Homelander as a character sounds like a really cool antagonist to have. But, like, when I looked at the Mega, what do you call it? Mega, Mega Man? Not Mega Man. That Amazon okay. show. What was it called? Invincible or something like that. Ah, Invincible. Like, that was kind of just, like, eh, it felt very one notey. Like, I, I'm not a fan of Omni Man. Like, I get the entire point of Invincible is to go bad Superman. Like, yeah, I get it. And bad Superman, really bad Superman. And then how do you deal with really bad Superman? And what would be the effects of bad Superman? And how would bad Superman behave? All right, cool. That's a nice twist. But the problem is, I've seen so many bad Superman now, I'm just fucking sick of bad Superman. I, I just want Superman to be a good guy again. That's all I want. <sighs> yeah. I miss the, the fucking ancient ass show, Superman, where he... um, God, I it was from... It was old. I can't even assume right here. TV? It was an old TV. Um, Lois and Clark. That was the one. The yes, Superman. Lois and Clark. Really old Superman show where Superman's just a good guy. Like, he's just a Boy Scout. Like, the worst thing he does is when in the first season, uh, Lois is really freaking out. Like, oh my God, Superman, Superman, must have Superman. And... She's saying mean things about him as he's right next to her. And so he calls in a tip saying that Superman was spotted in the swamp or something. And so he shows up at the end of the episode, like drenched in some wa slump, uh, swamp water. And just Clark goes like, oh, wasn't Superman in the swamps? Darn, gosh, jolly, that was weird. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> It's, ah, oh, that's the Superman I want again. Just a charming fucking hillbilly hick. That's, that's what I want. God damn it. Sick of, sick of evil Superman. <sighs> uh, Marango 2 says, I carry the banner for Gondor. I carry uh, the banner for Gondor. Oh, yay. That's a good reference. Barch. Barch. Zenithus says, uh, what's wrong with you? You should play the Battle for Middle Earth games. No. They're good. Zenithus says, nobody. English language. Every sea in Pacific Ocean is different. Yes. I don't like the seas. Uh, Mark James, Sauron's plan will be more convoluted than Palpatine's plan in the prequels. Probably a lot worse. Like, the thing is, too, I'm not... I'm only actually... I'm half joking, let's say, when I say that the timeline is going to be confusing as everlasting fuck, because this is taking place over something like... Is it three or four or five thousand years or something? Like, this timeline is going to be a mess. Yeah, they got to pace it. Pacing in this show? Mm-mm-mm. I mean, theoretically, they got five seasons to do it in, so they should be able to do it, but I don't think they will. <laughs> they have a sneaking suspicion they're going to fuck it up. Like, the thing is, I'm almost certain they're going to be too tempted to blow their pathetic little Californian load all over the screen in the first season. The first season will have Sauron the reveal, the Balrog will have jerked off on camera seven fucking times, Gilgalad will probably have died to cancer and resurrected twice. Like, stupid shit. And then you're sitting there like, now what? And now it just becomes days of our lives <laughs> in Lord of the Rings. So we're just sort of like chilling, and today I think I'm going to have some stew. <laughs> Uh, General Sizzix, just because Anglos cannot use letters properly doesn't mean we all should f Fulton ourselves to their level. Fulton. Lower ourselves. Uh, Maranga 2, Celt, Barch with a hard C. There you go. In fact, that's the correct pronunciation too, because there's a football team in America called the Celtics. Demolished. All right, uh, let me move on to the other topic then before we uh, do the rest. Uh, did I did I save this? Probably not. All right, we shan't have to have... Uh... 
kind of search for it because we'll probably see all kinds of disgusting shit pop up in his search history, so I'll find it real quick. Okay, what do you want me to find, you little slut? Blam. Himworld. 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 That's an interesting him? spelling. As in, like, him? There. I didn't find it. Did you find it? Yes. Homeworld. I thought you said Himworld. I was like, what are you yes. looking for? <laughs> Himworld. Soft music starts to play. I remember the Cartoba. Oh. You can just have that on loop in the background because <laughs> it doesn't really present us with much of anything. Honestly, it really kind of doesn't. So, this, of course, Homeworld 3, Himworld. We talked about Relic last time and how they're probably going to fuck up Company of Heroes 3. And Homeworld was their first goddamn game, and he was a revolution. It's like, holy shit, a 3D map you can go up, down, left, center. Ah, this is incredible. It had great graphics, it had a really cool story, it had excellent effects. It was just a fantastic strategy game. And it was their first strategy game, too. It was damn amazing. Homeworld 2 was also an absolute classic. And now we're getting Homeworld 3 from Blackbird Interactive and Gearbox, which is like Gearbox, 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 Gearbox. Gearbox is not to be trusted. Gearbox is not to be trusted. Gearbox is evil! Yes. Gearbox is a problem, but, um... Well, we shan't throw the baby out with the bathwater just yet, at least. I really hope it's good, because I... God, I want more Homeworld. Because Desert of Karak was... Cool. I, I liked it. Like, I thought it was fun. And I really enjoyed the way the vehicles zooped over the sand. So like, rrm, rrm, and then they jumped a little bit over the dew. And, oh. I almost wish they did more with it, actually. Yes, actually, that was my biggest complaint about uh, Desert of Karaks. The fact that the game kind of just stopped being a video game after a few hours. And it's like, I'm over now. What do you mean you're over? I'm done. What? I'm finished. Yeah, and the multiplayer stuff was kind of like, eh, it was very meh, very bleh. Yeah, I mean, there was like two factions. So like, eh. Don't worry, they DLC'd another one. I never tried oh. it, but they did. Okay. I remember that. It's nice of them, I guess. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> but it was it was a cool idea, although I'll say this, nobody asked for Homeworld but on a planet. <laughs> That was just a weird decision. I, we should, we, we'll make a homeworld game. Cool. We, we, what part of home will we take place? And what kind of awesome space revisions will we have? I was thinking nothing. I was thinking just on dirt. <laughs> See? <Yeah. laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to do like a naval homeworld then with ships and like enormous ocean. No, no, no. Their homeworld, the desert planet. Oh, so no navy at all? No. But you'll have a carrier that drives on the sand, though. Get oh. this. Imagine a navy, but on the sand. You're like, whoa. <laughs> that was the point that Bob should have been slapped and kicked out of the office, but for some reason, he uh, he wasn't. Sand navy, bro. Hello, <laughs> Hawkbar. Join the sand navy. That's kind of the vibe you get when you play the game, though. <laughs> a little bit. But... Homeworld 3, the thing is, this is, and just to point this out, this is Homeworld 3 first gameplay, gameplay first look trailer. Yeah, it's not gameplay. It's pre-rendered yeah. cutscenes mixed with, like, CGI and just static shots of, like, the environment, which I assume is in-engine st uh, stuff, but still. It looks art stylistic and nice, and it's, um, I mean, oh, just, so Gearbox isn't developing a check. I see some people saying Gearbox developing? No, no, no. They're publishing. You shouldn't trust them, but it's actually BBI, Blackbird Interactive. They're the same guys who developed uh, uh, Deserts of Karak. Yes. Oh. Like, I, I don't think it'll be necessarily uh, you know, all that bad. I think it might have even be cool. There's every possibility that it might actually be uh, mildly adorable. But we know next to nothing about this video game. Yep. Like, just actually nothing. Like, this is the closest we've come 
to having a look at the gameplay. And it's like it's it's tiny, tiny, tiny little microscopic slices of gameplay here and there. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's not enough to go off of. Like there's there's nothing of substance. There isn't. The music yeah, is cool, though. Yeah, it is, and it, it looks visually good. You know, you've got the uh, the home world feel to it. Uh, you got like giant floating weird shit in space. The ice planet looks really cool. Like that looks like an excellent backdrop. The Higaran mothership looks uh, far more attractive than usual. Uh, thank you for growing out of your hair. Bald chicks are weird. Okay, I'm just I'm sorry. It's just the truth. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Conversation ends there. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to disagree. Her being bald was kind of like... Eh. It was it was odd. But uh, there we are. I really hope it's good. And I'm kind of also just glad that it isn't a Relic game, because Relic is just... Relic is probably dead. Like, Company of Heroes 3 is going to be have to be one fuck of a success to rehabilitate Relic. And I... I'm not at all convinced that's going to happen. In large part due to also the hostility towards Relic from the fan base. Like The, the forums on uh, Come to Be Heroes 3 are filled with hate of COH3. Just like actual hate. And I totally fucking get it. Because Dawn of War 3 was that big of a fucking burn. And then they go and make that weird ass... Like, okay, here's the thing too. This trailer... Okay, gameplay, a blatant fucking bold-faced lie, make no mistake. But at least it looks homeworld, you know? It's got shit going around, it's flying, it's whoosh whoosh whooshing, it's pee pee pewing. Like, the Higarden mothership is there, like, locking out her hair, etc. It's all kinds of adorable shit. The background looks good, the music looks good, it's homeworld. What does COH3 do? Ah, the tale of the cloth that flatters through the desert as a woman looks at the strange metal beasts of war. Yeah. I honestly with Company Heroes 3, I don't think I, I expect it to be kind of a, a disappointment and I expect to see uh, the game not do that well. As it stands now. Chat asks, is there racism in this game? Yes. The homeworld game? Yeah. Yeah. The Tidani yeah. Empire uh, does not like the Hagarans. Like, uh, mm -hmm. fucking hate him. Um, Nobody likes the Beast. That's racism, technically. The Beast is... Oh, see, the Beast is so cool! Homeworld Cataclysm. Best homeworld game. Also, we need the Beast. I want the darker aspects of the universe. Well, you can't. So, uh... Gibbs to Kibbs! The Beast were the... The Beast is the most interesting faction. And, uh, like, the Mothership Lady, she's cute and all, whatever, but, like, let's be honest here. The mining ship was far more interesting, so was their story. Cataclysm has a better story than Homeworld 1 and 2, and uh, no one can fight me on that. That's just a simple fact. Look at that. I can tell some, some people are getting mad. They're anger. They're gritting their teeth. Like, and they're wrong as they grit their teeth. But Cataclysm's the best. Chat. And, if you want to pick it up, Homeworld Emergence. They had to rename because Cataclysm was a similar name. You can find it on GOG. I think they got literally sued by World of Warcraft or something. Oh, uh, they were threatened, if I remember right. <laughs> that is so dumb. Like, but our game was around first, though. Yes, and... We have more money than you. <laughs> we have more like, like, oh my god, I didn't, I didn't realize you were around for, hold on, let me just count my lawyers. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ah, oh, look at that. It doesn't matter, does it? Homeworld emergence it is here. I'll pull it up on GOG. This is the best homeworld chat. Lip quivers. Emergence it is. Homeworld emergence. You can find it on GOG. Best homeworld. It's better than, it's better than homeworld one. It's better than homeworld two. It's better than Desert's a Crack. It's just fucking amazing. The atmosphere is just delectable. There is no game like it. No game that captures horror in an RTS like Emergence does. And it's fucking awesome. Or maybe Little Kibbs was just an enormous scare to guess. And that, uh, I am. Possible too. I am. Uh, actually, I do not do well in scary games. But um, Cataclysm gave me nightmares. It's the only RTS that ever gave me fucking nightmares. 
like I said, I'm a little scared of Catacib. It's fine. Gudge. Cataclysm has the better story. Yeah, the other homeworlds might have better gameplay when it comes to, like the skirmish and multiplayer, but Cataclysm has the best campaign. Just flat out. The beast is amazing. They really need to hurry up and actually produce something to look at, though, because bear in mind, the game was, I think, originally supposed to come out this year, and now it's like the first quarter, I think, of 2023. They don't have a whole lot of time. People would like to see what you've been doing, Blackbird, and there's we haven't actually done a lot. It's unfortunate. Tragic, even. One might even say depressing. Mm-hmm. Tragic. I do hope it's good. I, I want do. it to be. I hope it's moddable, too, because that's something that's not mentioned. The Homeworld 2, like what kept Homeworld 2 rolling for me and why I uh, kept playing it again and again was that the mods were awesome. They had a cool Star Wars mod, Stargate mod, a Babylon 5 mod. Like, there's a lot of good mods for it. So I hope to God they don't castrate the modding scene. Well, they're gonna, because there hasn't been a good, uh, there hasn't been a game with good modding for like a fucking decade. That's true, and uh, that needs to change. Money comes first. That's also Your mods sadly come true. a distant second. But modding, a good modding scene can lead to money, though. That's what developers need to understand, like, indirectly. Like, Arma or Squad, a lot of people I know picked up Squad because of the Star Wars Galactic Contention mod. Yes, Must but make that's money. money tomorrow, Kyle. They would like money today. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's Gearbox, so they're they're very short-sighted usually, so yeah. They're bad people, and they should be ashamed of themselves. Gearbox, though, eh, we'll have to see. Uh, Blackbird Interactive, I mean, hmm. BBI. For some reason, they followed me on Twitter. I don't know why. Probably don't know who you are yet. Probably misclicked. I'm sure they'll unfollow you. Your... They fat fingered the button, probably. Because <laughs> there's a couple of things, right? They made Minecraft Legends. What? Yep. Huh? Blackbird Interactive they're made all, what now? <laughs> they're all making it. They're making a game called Minecraft Legends. I mean, that will make them a shit ton of money, I guess. I suppose so. I have no I'm idea what that is. I mean, it's goddamn Minecraft. Slap the word Minecraft on it. It's it's like the thing. The thing that makes the money. Yep. And Hard Space Shipbreakers. Hard Space Shipbreakers. Wait, BBI was behind that? Yep. Oh my god, that makes sense art direction-wise. I was like, this kind of looks like Homeworld. <laughs> 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 well, now we know why. Yeah, no, uh, Hard Space Shipbreakers is actually a really chill game. Good, good, great composition of music, very relaxing, sort of blue-collar vibe, and uh, you just take apart ships and, like, uh, for some some company that disassembles ships and there's hazards and all that. It's very, very relaxing and intense at the same time. They also, um... They also have that, um... That... I don't know if you looked at it. Crossfire Legion. Uh, it was a little RTS thing that they released a while ago. I, it sounds... It's not doing well in the reviews, and nobody's buying it, so I'm not... Crossfire it's not a smash Legion. hit. That looks... The cover for that looks horrendous. Yes. That, like, that cover reeks of, like, it's a cheesy budget race car game kind of cover. <laughs> The screenshots does not look uh, My drops. a lot better. They don't really have a dedicated can... gameplay trailer. No, and uh, just looking at the reviews too, mixed, mixed, very few reviews. And I, uh... Uh, the gameplay looks, uh, it's, from the little snippets of footage that are there. Not particularly interesting, no. Looks uh, very no. generic. Blackbird Interactive's track record as it stands is mixed. 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 
But that might also simply mean that, you know, they've got their A-team working in Homeworld 3, and then they've got another, you know, handful of interns that nobody actually likes just hanging around the fucking studio, and they have to pay them because they're diversity hires. And like, you if, make this thing. What thing? This thing. They just give them a picture of a Tesla tank, like, okay. I don't know, man. That looks uh, like a mobile game. Uh huh. Imagine if you shield for a game like that. That'd make you a pretty big piece of shit, wouldn't it? Nah. I only say it and smile as I look at the screen. The shit eating grin that plasters my face. Chat. You know what I'm talking about. They know. Arch like, what are you talking about? Only shills and weak-willed people would be on would be on this page. Pathetic if you get paid enough. That need to be eradicated. Now, look, look, look way chat. Barch has no idea what I'm talking about, by the way. He's innocent. I dig my own grave. <laughs> I mean, it looked very weird, but such is life. All ah, right, let's uh, move on to the Super Chats again and uh, begin wrapping up uh, for today. Arangi says, There is also a scene in the extended cut. While Gandalf ponders the ring and holding for a mere second has him briefly entranced, the ring is strong. Yes, yes it is. Giga, can't say that word on YouTube, uh, says, <laughs> Have you heard they are remaking Highlander? Oh, I know who Giga is. He shows up in my streams too. Yeah, we can't say his name. They are remaking Highlander. That I that don't know. That sounds awful. No. 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 How about instead Just... of remaking things, how about we make new things? Hmm? How about no, we do I that? Don't, I don't trust people to make new things either, frankly. I mean, I don't trust people to make anything anymore. <laughs> Isn't Sean Connery fucking dead? You're not allowed to do anything with Sean Connery now. Like, he's sacrosanct now. Oh, he is dead. Yeah, you can't do anything with him anymore. Like, okay, here's the thing. I'll allow you to remake Red October so long as you have, like, a dude with a heavy Scottish accent as the Soviet captain again. In that case, I'm fine with it. Red October is hilarious because there's a just movie. a... Like, as a little kid, I was like, Russian people sound like Scottish people. Unironically. That's my thought. That was my thought from that. And so when I saw a movie with another Russian in it and they talked differently, like, oh, come with it. And I'm like... What is wrong with his voice, though? <laughs> Red, Red October is a great fucking movie. It is. It, it's fantastic. It's one of those old movies where there's like, the Soviets with their pathetic tiny economy and incompetent scientists have invented super weapon. Oh. All right. Uh, Listen, we had to make it interesting because the Soviets weren't doing a good job. <laughs> like it, it's very in keeping with the general western idea at the time though where everything the soviets made was just a complete wunderwaffen and they were just confused i mean it was better it was better that we had the mentality that they were making crazy things because it started with the sputnik because that's what sort of created that whole illusion of the soviets have like all these advanced things and wonder weapons so that so we had this need to just absolutely compete and that's just so happened that helped us obliterate them in the technological race the West was behind the Soviet Union for a very long time. Like, the the M60 is a piece of fucking garbage. Especially when compared to its supposed opposition, like the T-55 and T-62s and shit. But we never stopped. <laughs> like, we, we matched them, and then we surpassed them, and right now we're orbiting them, and we're still looking down like, my god, their tanks look really scary, though. A little bit of a surprise. Just a pinch, though. Red October. God damn it. I just, I enjoy, I enjoyed the fact that he never even tried. Like, that takes certain, like, because, you know, on set, they were like, all right, you're a Soviet captain. And they, they look at him and they expect him to read out the lines in the accent. And then he doesn't. And then the thing is like, OK, OK, he's, he's just doing that for the reading sessions. It's fine. It's fine. And then they're on set and he just keeps talking. <laughs> in his fucking accent and nobody dares open their mouth because it's sean fucking connery even as everyone else around him is like the capitan he's like yes <laughs> it's your eye sean connery sean connery's cool though <laughs> this is what i mean nobody dared to fucking open their mouth 
Oh my god. Now I have this, like, urge to watch a Sean Connery movie. Oh, watch The Longest Day. Which one was that again? Names uh, are that was an, That's an ancient ass movie from 1962 about the D-Day invasion. Sean Connery has a cameo, a cameo in it before he got famous, and it's hilarious. <laughs> that I did not know. Okay, so that, did, that didn't ring a bell because I just didn't know about it. It's kind of great because he's just some nameless fucking grunt in the B-lister role, and you look at him like, that's Sean Connery. Simultaneously, you look at all of the other ones, the incredibly big names of the time, and you don't recognize a single one of them, like John Wayne, Henry Ford, fucking Richard Burton, and I'm just looking at the screen like, who are these weird-ass people? I tell you, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. <laughs> uh... That was really funny. It did have some really cool little scenes, too, though. Longest Day was a good movie. You know, for 1962 standards, anyways. Uh, Troy Neenan says, Any chance that you and Major killed to a law video? <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> also, I got the theory that the guard that stood up two hours to save Big E was an alpha marine. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That hurt. I need a drink. <laughs> uh, Mark is saying, we are in the era of no more heroes. All heroes today suffer one of the three fates. They die, they become villains, or they are fake. Stolen valor. Show me a hero and I will write you a tragedy. Yeah, that is kind of true. And here's the thing. Heroes need flaws. They have to have flaws. Because otherwise, they're not human. And good heroes must be human. They must yeah. be relatable now they can be better versions of ourselves sure but they must have some kind of flaw you think of superman right superman is um the boy scout okay but he is also a man from a different world he is somebody unfamiliar with our world he's always an outsider always longing for his home and trying to figure out who his family was like that's his humanizing part even Batman has a humanizing part. My parents are dead. As much of a fucking meme as that has become. Oh, fucking Batman. DC has just lost the superhero race. They just need to stop making movies now and just give up. It's all they can do. It's over for you. It's time for you to stop being a company. Okay. <laughs> just dissolve. Pretty much. And don't make another Superman. Like this, I hate this. It's like, Superman's really cool, right? Yeah. So let's let's make a Superboy. Okay. Uh, Superman, Superwoman. All right. Pushing it a little bit now. Uh, <laughs> Supergirl. Jesus Christ. Hold on. Superboy again. What the fuck? Superdog. Kill me. Oh, damn it. I was going to do the Superdog one. Fuck you. <laughs> That's true, though. Like, they overdid the super thing to the point where it's like, it's a super family. It's like super cringe. <laughs> Yep, and they named the dog Crypto, which was the worst thing in history of ever. Because he's his kryptonite. Oh. <laughs> God help me. It was stupid. Oh, hey, there's a furry comic. God help me again. <laughs> Here you go, Kib. No, don't send it to me. What is it? He's got Bat Dog, too. Okay, you made it sound a lot worse than what it is. Rough, rough, and away! Cartoon Network. Now that's a channel I'd never... See, I remember seeing that logo as a kid and being like, Cartoon Network, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Samurai Jack, Star Wars Micro Series, you know... Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. There's, they had so much, but now I see CNN and I'm like, pedos. Pedos come to mind. <laughs> 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 They've ruined their logo for me. <laughs> yes, Cartoon Next to it used to be great. Like it shows like Johnny Bravo on it. Oh, now... Johnny Bravo, yeah. Ah, <sighs> Johnny Bravo was fucking great. <laughs> Cartoon Network had so many things going for it. It would have been like, man, we grew up in the golden era. Like, fuck, yes. we had everything. Yes, we, we were spoiled. The next generations, you got fucked. You got fucked so hard, it's almost sad. <laughs> Johnny Bravo was great. 
Uh, Troy Neiman, in Rings of Power, I expect to see Black Santa leading a combat Latinx cobbler elves. Or also, do you think the, the word bearers couldn't convert to battle sisters? Mm, no. Because the battle sisters have a lot of plot armor. Like, the only converted, like, the uh, corrupted battle sisters I know of was in Cypher's Cane, where they were literally brainwashed. And then when the brainwashing stopped, they shot themselves because they realized all of the horrible things they did. Like, oh my god, we're the, are, we, are we the baddies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, this was the answer. You are. Uh, Shadow Fox 20th is it? Is it Arch? The problem is that nowadays, if you try to hold your breath of a, of a old game to be good, then you will suffocate. Well, yes. That, I can still hold that hope. You know? We can cross Maybe our fingers and cross our toes. One of these days, they'll get it right. Statistically speaking, it's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's, gonna... it's almost certain to happen at some point. Just, you know, whether or not it's in our lifespan is another question. Chat is correct that Power Girl is better waifu than uh, Supergirl, though. That's not even a fucking... Ah, oh, that's right, there were Oops. even more super people, but they gave them different super names, because I guess they even they were like, yeah, we've overused the super a little bit much. Mm -hmm. There was a period there where they got dangerously close to going down the Japan route, where they just added Ultra or Super to anything and everything. Like, Ultraman, Superman, Duperman, Urr. I'm Mega a Pooper Scooper man. Not nearly as good as Duper. <laughs> uh, Shadow Fox. Oh, yeah, right, right. Uh, my shame. Well, as some known, Angel Fall first was originally a homeworld mod before UE3, then its own thing. That being said, the lore they made on their strangely interactive wiki, not the fandom, has interesting lore and novellas. Kyle still hasn't played Angels Fall first. People he keep simping for Angels Fall first, and I checked it out, I picked it up and got it and played it by myself because no one else plays that game. <laughs> and I was like, this game is, it, I mean, it is interesting. Like, it's, it kind of reminds me of Unreal Tournament 2004 a little bit because I think it's on the same engine. Like, there's spaceship battles and, this, like, you can control the ships and you can also board them and there's ground battles. So it's like, it, imagine Star Wars Battlefront, but, like, more expansive and has a lot more effort and you know stuff put in it and it looks better too and then for whatever reason just imagine that but for some reason nobody plays it ever yeah there you go <laughs> it's like a little like you see cobwebs just roll by like oh that's interesting now that might have changed i saw some youtubers had recently made some videos about it and sometimes a little bit of content creation generates actual growth in terms of player base. But I haven't really seen anything about it. Look, it marked a shame. like, look again. Every time I boot it up, though, I swear the players all shrink away and hide. Like, no, we don't want to be seen. No, we're not playing. <laughs> Never. Ray Dog says, what's the opinion on Scorn, then? We've got a new trailer for it, as well as the pounding Ukraine is uh, currently getting. Scorn. Kyle, help. Uh, Scorn, the game? I'm presuming so. Do you have anything else in mind? Uh, Scorn is a... I didn't know if that was... You were saying Look, Scorn as in related to what you were saying before. Scorn is a video game where you... It's like a first-person shooter, and it's like weird, and it's like Geiger-influenced or inspired is what it looks like. Let's pull, actually, no. I don't know if I can pull it up on stream. I'm going to... I don't know if it's... Hmm. It, it, it might be inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, looking at these screenshots, I'd say probably inappropriate. Okay, you saw it. Scorn, $35. That is a weird art style uh off-putting is what i'd probably call it yep they're trying to be like like it yeah that's very Edging. geiger that's very geiger yeah 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 okay you can look it up on steam i'm not gonna pull it up because that kind of stuff is kind of like it can get you in trouble maybe i'm not sure maybe youtubers are making stuff on it i'm always skeptical and scared but yeah it's very gross and icky very gross and icky Comes out in two months. I mean, it's got a very, artistically, it's got a very unique art style. Here, let's pull up a piece of art from it that doesn't, that looks like I might not, it, that looks safe-ish. Yeah, that looks kind of safe. That looks safe. Let me just scan it. 
Yeah, so it looks looks cool and spooky, but it's very Geiger influenced. Very fleshy, very visceral. The trailer's on YouTube. The, you say that, but their trailer might also be flagged with things, and I don't want to flag Barch's video with things. Because you can get it flagged by playing some copyrighted music, by playing putting something that gets you piss stain yellow. Because you probably can upload it and record it, it's just whether or not you get hit with things for doing it. It's called Biomechanical. Oh, excuse me, princess. Icky and gross sounds like a correct description of biomechanical. Yeah. Icky and gross. I think we nailed it. It's goopy. Perfect. There you go. That's the uh, opinion on Scorn. Uh, Troy Neenden. What happens if someone dies inside the warp? What happens to a person's soul if they die in a Galia? Galia, for Legos. Do blank souls go to warp? Uh, well, if they could die in the warp, they're just eaten. They're just dead dead. And that's, again, the question if the souls are even the, you know, people themselves or just energy at that point. If they die within the Gela field, I think they're trapped within the Gela field until the Gela field uh, goes down and they're eaten again. 40k is just kind of shit like that. You just get eaten. Now, blanks, I don't know. That's a theoretical one, definitely. Seeing as they are literally the uh, antithesis of the warp. Uh, player card. Gog. YouTube, stop it. Gong version of Homeworld has issues. People have problems with getting it to start. Hmm. Well. Yeah, I don't know about that. Are you talking about Homeworld Remastered? Because I've not I've not played it on the GOG version. So I don't know. But yeah, definitely do research. i my Homeworld Emergence works. I started it the other day. Was thinking about making a series on it one day. Maybe for Halloween or something. Spooky. But works for me at least. The only problem with a video game that doesn't start is that uh, it doesn't start. Yeah, you can't play it. You're just kind of sad about it. Also, Sargon yes. says that Horus Heresy is currently trending on Twitter. I set my Twitter to Japanese because I hate looking at the trending tab. I hope it's because it's racist. Take a look. What is it, what is it doing? <laughs> I don't know how trends work, Kyle. Gosh darn it. Sargon, help this boomer. <laughs> Send him a DM. <laughs> I can't find things. <laughs> Listen, Barch and social media don't go well together. They really don't. I hate social media. It's gay. Fair enough. Not going to argue with you. I agree. Plush. I don't like hashtags. Hashtags are dumb. Don't like them. They're stupid. <laughs> Barch is mad. Bosch is trending too. That's... There is a determ this disturbing amount of uh, trans flags and pedo flags though. I'm assuming somebody's triggered about something, if I had to guess. Or somebody's just being an enormous groomer on the internet again. I would not be surprised. In fact, I imagine that's happening 24 freaking 7. It seems likely. It seems overwhelmingly likely. Tonu Unushi? Tonu Unushi says that we live. You do? You are alive for a while longer. Be happy about it, because God knows how long it's going to last. Uh, Mark James says, Live service and modding cannot coexist. Correct. They are enemies. Nick says, Hey Arch, appreciate your content. Does anybody wonder if Amazon are simply George R.R. Martin fanboy, fans booty sore, but him losing his epic rap battle in history to Tolkien? So now they're trying to destroy his legacy, maybe. Wouldn't surprise me. They are, well, not destroy, claim legacy. Uh, slight difference. Uh, Jonathan Miss says, Do you enjoy a Sabaton? Love their music. I understand you hate all things blue and yellow. Sabaton is pretty good, and uh, 
Oh, they sing in English, so they don't get to be Swedish. It's fine. Oh, Boog says, the hell is Eminem doing in Lord of the Rings? That is a question that many people have raised right now, and there does not seem to be a satisfactory answer to that one. He is presumably... rapping. Making noises. Yes. Uh, Glowy says, talk about traps. Oh, God. In original Disney Mulan, when Mulan introduced herself as a Fa Ping or Hua Ping in English meaning flower ways, Shang was bewildered by silly names because it was slang for camp gay. Hmm. So Mulan introduced herself as a twink. I mean, she was a twink. There was that beautiful meme where... Uh, training camp person just has his back turned to Mulan when he's, uh, when he's being revealed. Her, my dear. She is being revealed. She's sitting on the floor, now holding her chest, and he's looking down, trying, like, I can't believe I fell in love with a chick. Ugh, gross. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Icky. I remember that scene. And, like, as, as I grew older, I'm like, that is kind of weird. He's like, I'm feeling these scene. weird things. And then turns out it's a lady like, no. Like, yuck. <laughs> he wanted I, I a thought you were a man. <laughs> when you get reverse trapped and you're gay. <laughs> That's funny. Disgusting. Uh, also, by the way, I feel like they were supposed to solve the the puzzle of going up the stick by just, like, all lining up and pushing somebody up the fucking stick, but no, she had to climb the stick with weights, which just sounds silly. Ah, here it is. There you go, Kyle. Look. Let me take a sweet peek. Let's see. Where is it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the scene. I haven't seen Mulan in such a long time. This is a good movie. I'll debate that, but... Uh, you don't like that movie? I like the songs of this one. It has a good song, and the rest are deeply forgettable. They are, but it's also got a really cool art style. At least I liked it. Wow. Well, once again, you're proving your weirdness. Wow, you said you were a man. Oh my god, I can't believe I was in love with the chick. Cringe. <laughs> Uh, Trims on track says, hey, Archie Kibbs, H agree, uh, hey, I, I, I guess, agree with the lot of fanfic critique. Hell, every new part of all IPs are just every shitty fan fictions. Also, remember, Christopher Evera, Everard is gearing up to crowdfund a bestiary from his book series. Please give him attention. Attention. Mm, we shall see. Attention is, uh, it's difficult to give. You know, quite work. Uh, Glowy says, Invincible is supposed to be Superman in story. Only man is supposed to be his temptation to do bad. Think Zod, a Superman dad saying, Boy, we are obviously better than humans. Let's not pretend to be lovely, lowly humans. I agree, Superman rapes up our tired trope. See, if there was the intent, they didn't do it very well. Because Invincible isn't Superman. Invincible is a tard. A stupid tard. A dumb tard. A gay tard, and a pretty useless tard at that. He gets his ass beat a lot. Constantly. All the fucking time. And, oh god, he's he's one of those teenage hero characters that I absolutely hate, because they just can't stop fucking up. It's like, I, I have a girlfriend. Oh, that girlfriend didn't like me. Why doesn't she like me? It's because I'm a superhero and I don't have time for it. Like, bitch, he's saving human lives. Fuck you. I'm needy, though. Don't care. Yep. If you're that needy to the point where you're like, you're getting in the... That's like having a partner, even on like a regular partner. He's like, hey, I have a job. I need to make money. It's like, no, you need more time for me. That's a toxic relationship. It's like you can't, even, you can't even breathe. You can't do your own stuff. You can't have your own hobbies. You're in a bad relationship. You need a partner that respects your space and you respect their space. You can do your own hobbies and, you know, pursue pursue your dreams and ambitions. Now, I really like the robot dude. The robot dude was awesome. That was a cool story. I liked Robot Man. Robot Man can stay. 
Good twist too. Whereas Omni Man, like Omni Man, isn't even evil. He j that's the thing. Omni Man is completely a moral in the most literal sense of the word he doesn't give a fuck like, humans aren't human to him like they're not creatures that he give any moral consideration to because they're ants like yep. that makes him evil from our perspective and that's the the value judgment like to us he is evil but in his point of view we're just weird little puppy dog things cute little pets to be subjugated into his people's empire yes and even then, he was a really good guy for going like, I don't want to do that, though. It's a bit cruel. Mm. Mm, yeah, wasn't the biggest fan of Invincible. It was cool, but again, the, pl the, the, the plot and the quote-unquote twist was just a little bit too ham. The whole twist is that the superhero race is actually evil, and they're, they're all about subjugating other races into their empire. As basically like superheroes aren't super. Like, yeah. I just, I, just want, I just want superheroes now. I think the best movie that approached the superhero trope with interesting things was Incredibles. Love that movie so much. Mmm, weirdo. If everyone's super, then no one's super. That's kind of true. Syndrome's philosophy is actually kind of interesting. That show actually was... Like, that show's cool. Like, I like that show. Or movie. Second one, dumb. Mark Shane says, Death took Sean Connery and left Klaus Schwab. 007 is not supposed to die before Spectre, damn it. Well, that's, uh, that's the problem, isn't it? Our heroes are all dead now, but Klaus Schwab is still around. Yay. <laughs> all of those little fetuses, uh, they, power, they, they fuel him so well. Uh, Fenry 44, look up Falling Frontier by Stutterfix Studios. It looks very promising. Falling Frontier. Falling Frontier, Google, come here. Oh, yeah, I think I put this on my wish list. It looks cool. Yep, this might be interesting. I'll probably pick this up. It looks uh, confused and weird, and there's guns and stuff, and it has a very eye strainy art style which i think will hurt my eyes but uh oh well eye strainy art style oh yeah 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 i think i've yep i've seen this it'll be cool i hope maybe uh pedro de Sa, remember that invincible's girlfriend was a progressive who reads tanishi coats yes i know she was fucking awful but eventually he managed to bang red-haired chick instead and red-haired chick was better even if red-haired chick was weird as well Listen, gotta start somewhere. Sometimes rock bottom. <laughs> yep. Sometimes you have to go for sloppy seconds, which was red-haired chick. And see, when you put it that okay. way, that sounds really gross. <laughs> it was, especially since red-haired chick was the sloppy seconds of some fucking awful dude bro character, too. It's like, man, you have fallen low, my boy. This hurts me. You have fallen so far. How will you ever get back up again? Well, you see, my high was an SJW black chick. Like, oh, oh. Well, that's right. In the show, they changed her race. Yes, they did uh, race swap her too, because, you know, 2020. I'm honestly, like, anytime there's, like, a race swap of anything, like, I, unless it's, like, an animation where they're, like, okay, we changed the voice actor. Like, Samurai Jack uh, was voiced by a black guy, and he actually did a fantastic job. But that's, that's different. It's the fact that they race swap them for like political reasons, not based on skill, not based on you know talent, or they can do the voice that they they need. It's like no, 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 we got to get a quota. Like that's so corporate and disgusting. That's just how the world works. And finally, Boog says to Omni Man, "Doing his wife was bestiality." Yes, disgusting. He was a never degenerate. Like, I love your mother and all, but she's basically an animal. And that must have been a bit weird for Invincible. Like, I'm the, the, the son of a dog? Yes, you came out very well, though. Don't worry about it. Though even then, you can kind of see Omniman shanking his head as his little idiot son is like, flying is hard, though. You stupid child. 
at least he's kind of nice about it, unlike Homelander, who's like, okay, little bitch boy, no, we're gonna go up on the roof now. Throws him off the roof, like, huh, that's, uh, that's not how you fly. Ryan is up there like, Daddy, why are we on the roof? Ha ha ha, Bush. He lands smack, and he just goes like, oh, well, try again. Homelander is misunderstood, okay? Like, yes, he may have thrown his son off the roof, but he's his son. Like, he's not going to get hurt or anything. And I hated it when the show was trying to have him be down there for a bit. And he's like, oh, he could totally have snapped his tiny little neck. No, no, he's he's literally bulletproof. Like, don't. Yeah, he basically pretend. has the same powers as Homelander. Don't be an idiot. Like, it didn't don't even be phase him. It. It would be like It would be like if you or I just, like, laid down on the bed. We're like, whoa, you know. We're on, we're on your back now. Wow. What are we going to do on the bed, Pomp? He's like, oh. <laughs> Homelander was the good guy all along. He's just misunderstood. You know, he's just trying to help. Yeah. Also, I read the comic because I was curious, and the twist was really stupid in the comic, and I hate it. The co Honestly, I don't <laughs> like the comic. The comic's just bad, actually. Like, I was curious. Yeah. I was like, I read it, and I'm like, the show is actually better than the comic. The comic is actually garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the 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 boys comic is not good like it's actually not very it's, good it's it's literally written by somebody who just like listen i'm sick of superheroes i'm not a super big fan of superheroes but it's written by somebody who just hates superheroes and so it's very one-dimensional in one note yes all the superheroes are just the worst kind of fucking monsters imaginable and you're basically just kind of supposed to be like, ah, oh, it's really funny to watch them do horrible things and then be uh, killed. And brutally murdered. Yep. <laughs> and like, I get it. It's the, the shock effect of the times, but it's, it's genuinely worse than the show. The comic was terrible. It was. It's like, it's like the postal video game, but it's not funny and it's not, it's not fun. It's just kind of like cringe. <laughs> Yes, it is kind of just cringe. It also has its little thing with communism, of course, where it's like, okay, yes, yes, oh, Lenin yeah. and all that was pretty hard, but, but that wasn't real communism. Uh huh. Yeah, the writer's a bit, uh, well, you know, special. Heard this one before. <sighs> oh, oh, let's see. Uh, Mark James says, must bang one and only one, Starfire or Raven? Starfire or Raven? I mean, that's not even... Man, Raven... Raven is, isn't Raven like 12 or something? Damn. Like, this This doesn't sound like a difficult choice to me, honestly. Okay, let's just assume that they're all adults in this case, okay? There, now pick... They're They're all in their, you know, 20s. See, slut fire is used goods. Excessively used goods. It's true, but what about Raven? She might go be the name Slutfire. Boring. Raven might be worse because wasn't her boyfriend uh, a shapeshifter? <laughs> I know yeah, that that's just... true. Raven's probably been railed by Horsecock at least 12 times. She don't feel nothing down there anymore. <laughs> Yeah, now we're gonna have to go with Starfire on that one. Slutfire it is. <laughs> like, used goods is one thing, but used animal goods, like Jesus. That's a low. There comes a point, and when you, when you, when you need to, you need to accept the losses. There does indeed come a point, yes. See, the problem is chat doesn't realize this we've reached, because I was like, I was like, I was like originally leading Raven too, like you chat, and I was like, wait a minute. Nope, never mind. <laughs> Now we're gonna wait for the the regret and the the, the, the people start switching into reverse. Like, where? Well, I'm pretty sure I've seen a hentai manga with Raven getting railed by her boyfriend in the form of a T Rex. Okay, penis larger than her. That's Raven. That uh, is uh, horrific mental imagery and uh, will scar many, many, many viewers for a very long time. Now. I'll, I'll I'll specify this though, not the Starfire from the TV show, because Jesus Christ, Starfire. actual Jesus Christ. Actually, you have it wrong, Red Wolf. It, he says Starfire has a pussy like Gandalf sleeps. No, that would be Raven. Just 
That's a good one, though. Uh, they're they're both craters, but at least one is going to be probably more of a human-sized crater. A human-sized This is not what I expected we'd be talking about today, but is a welcome surprise in terms of cringe levels. One has to be realistic with these things, chat. It's very important. Look at some of them are coping, some of them are molding, and a few of them are seething. <laughs> Ichthulu, never forget best SM movie, Superman vs. Elite. Mm, don't know about this. I think Banu might be correct option. Definitely think Banu might be correct option. I like the one where he spun backwards so fast it turned back time. That one was very stupid. And uh, finally, Marcus Lowe says, Hi, Arch, and the furry dude. Any chance I can wow. bribe you into making a first Tyrannic War lore video? Also, what can you tell us about the False Primarchs? P.S. Love War for Badab series, just friggin' epic. Good. Well, False Primarch. Depends. Which one are you referring to? Because I think there's been a few at this point. There, um, War of the Force Primark, I guess? When there was, like, the dude who pretended to be Primark? I don't think there's a whole lot of lore around that. In fact, I think there's diddly dick nothing. Well, Barch, now's your time to flex your creative juices and make lore. Because uh, the Carcharodons were involved that I th and I'm pretty sure that was mentioned in the... Was it, was it in the Badab? Fluff books? I can't remember now, but I think it's like one line. It's like, there was the War of the False Primarch, and that's it. I think that is literally it. So, no much, sadly. Uh, tragically. Tyrannic Warlord video? Mm, maybe. We'll see. There are many things for me to cover at some point. Whether or not I will cover any of them is a different question. But, uh, oh, let me just check the other thing, too. Ah, yep. <laughs> One person snuck in there. Uh, Super chat, streamland, ship chat. Cringe, Raven asks, Kibbs, is it in yet? Kibbs is horrified about the gaping cavern. <laughs> Puts his head in there, yells, echoes. Uh, is anyone in here? In here? <laughs> <laughs> You're a distant, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's quite tragic. <laughs> Pulls head out, leaves. <laughs> There's a little sign on the outside that says occupied. <laughs> That's terrible. That is terrible. That's correct. <laughs> no. Though... All right, if, if you want some uh, some in-universe porn, go check out uh, Gunsmoke uh, Games. They're making a Justice League kind of porn game out of this, so you too can experience Raven's Crater. Oh god, you and Boogerton were, were ranting about that, I remember now. Oh, Boogerton was ranting about it. I know it exists, and I've looked at the Patreon, and I'm like, yeah, this is a cool project. And then I looked at the thing, it's like, seven year anniversary. Like, aha, I'll check back in in another five. <laughs> Some things are crowdsourced, you know, forever. Maybe it's, maybe, you never know. It might have, you know, enough content to last you seven years. To be fair, their stated goal is to make, like, um, full storylines for every female character in the DC comic universe. So, yeah. It's gonna be a while. That, uh... For smut, that is incredibly impressive. Yes, it's ambitious. That is, um... But hey, Something. smut is, uh... Well, we have arrived at the point where smut is probably a greater and more devoted art than the actual TV shows. That's actually very tragic. And yes. I think sadly true. Yes. And Desert Hamster at the end, please do a Life is Cringe stream. I don't have internet for it. You will. Oh. That's not going to remain true forever, Archie. No. 
chops up his wire. <laughs> now, I do hope they gender swap all of the male heroes, too, because that would just be evil and mean. <laughs> Mind break Batman. Ha, ha, ha. And the Joker finally gets his revenge. Now, until next time, thank you all very much for watching. Oh, Berg, bad. At least they delivered on the goods. Some doves just keep blue balling and milking simps and they just abandon the project. True. Like they are they are constantly putting out updated versions, so you can't take that away from them. Seven years of uh consistent progress is uh is something to be noteworthy, yeah, I suppose. Seven years of delivering an incrementally better project. Like fair enough. I still think a Patreon is kind of a scam at that point, but oh, well. Well, there's actually a, in my opinion, there's kind of a value to patrons in crowdsourcing an entire project because you don't have to answer to publishers. Like they won't have to go to one of those porn game publishers and ask for money and then have to cut corners. They can deliver their whole vision. However, That's true. They they can literally go like, okay, we're going to do this for 17 fucking years. And if people are like, cool, uh, have five bucks a month, then fair enough. And people by then, I think, I think they're honest, you know, they, they know what they're paying for. So I, I appreciate that more than I appreciate electronic arts. Ooh, Considering the seventh <laughs> anniversary post. Yes. I think people have a vague understanding of uh, the long longevity of the project. It's a, it's a long fap as it, as the saying goes. <laughs> so... <laughs> Seven year jerk off. Oh, that's uh you gotta pace yourselves. Now Doe girl donates one month. And Adoman says, when is the fiber optics? Nobody knows. Supposedly sometime after summer, so we'll see. And then I'm going to play Command Modern Operations. Then we'll see if you can bribe me enough to play anything else. We'll see about that. Poor bastards. Until next time, thank you all very much for watching and your super generous donations, and we will see you all next week. Bear in mind, no RP this week, because Dinkum is dinking. These things happen.